All right, guys. I am doing something unusual. I have with me the animator of this clip that you've just watched, the animator of the Gila Klein clip that we've watched a million times, uh, Sven Stoffels. Holy shit. Guys, I'm here. Sven Stoffels. I'm right here. It's amazing to be here. Thank you so much, Josh, for having me. Uh, Did you just welcome. watch which clip? The the Is China the... Ching Chong one? Ching Chang, yes. Ching Ching does a little dance. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she does a little dance. Yeah, yeah. Do you want to know the context behind that, or uh, what should we get into first here? Oh, man, I didn't realize that there could be a context for that. <laughs> there is. Oh, dude, I got... This clip got me mega canceled. I've been canceled a couple of times, but this one really, they really went after me. Like, well, uh, the well, I, I tried finding it, it, and the first thing that I saw was animator receives thousands of death threats after racist yes. clip or something like that. Did you receive yeah, thousands like, of death threats? Yes. I went over this one time on one of my streams. I showed a, t a ton of the death threats. Uh... I, I was like on Chinese news websites and stuff like that with like the worst picture of me in like a MAGA hat calling me like <laughs> a, the worst racist guy ever. And yeah, they went literally, they went after my old employees, after my family members. They sent pictures of my brother's newborn babies, decapit like photoshops of a decapitated baby to his front door. Wow. It was like an endless, endless. Uh, yeah, crazy, crazy uh, event for me. But yeah, I never relented. And then they deleted everything. They deleted my Patreon that I had at the time, my channels, everything. And I had to rebuild from there. Were you an animator yes. with uh, Comedy Central directly, or were you like a contractor? Um, well, there was a Comedy Central show called Trip Tank, and I directly worked for that show. So I guess, I don't know how okay. that works, but contractor been... probably, yeah. By like one degree of separation. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so that one, that was really, that was one of the worst cancellations ever. And they really fought me hard on that one. But yeah, you're one of my, uh, you're, you showcase one of my greatest works, the Eli Klein cartoon, which also can't live on any of my channels. That's also been banned uh, for my channels and got me in a lot of trouble. One of, one of um, my favorite, like, caricatures of anyone ever of all time, because it just, it just captures like this, because it, 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 it's not even like it's a fictitious depiction of her. She does have this utterly dead, soulless stare where you just don't feel <laughs> like she's looking at you when she looks at the camera or whatever. She just has like this completely hollow kind of presence. It, and, and it's like it just yeah. it just captures that perfectly. Well, and not, acor not according to H three himself. I don't. Maybe we should just watch that video. We just were. I just send you that. I think you've showed it once before. What I, do you I think? have. Okay, I will play both should, the clip. Everyone's seen the clip. He clip says he, he claim, H3, H3 claims that it's a uh, Nazi propaganda picture. But I, I mean, and I think you agree with me, would argue it looks exactly like her. There's barely any exaggeration there. I would barely even call it a caricature. Yeah, I mean, it's just, you know? it's just that your style is very, like, it, it, uh, <laughs> it plays up people's features quite a bit. <laughs> I mean, look, but, I mean, this could be a picture of her. Okay, I'll play Look it, the and then we'll watch the clip. Just yes, really yes. Really oh, my God. Just amazing. <laughs> but and people it's, were calling us the Avengers of Racism, which I thought was really funny. People were very excited. The, the art is like a direct parody of Doom, right? Uh, of what? Of Doom? Of Doom. Like, Doom, Doom, the Doom. video game. Oh, 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 no. Well, I mean, no, not really, actually. Was it wasn't intentional? It just looks like that? It's like a meeting of the minds yeah, on accident? Just, Okay. Yeah, it just has that vibe, I guess. That the. Yeah, I always, I always thought, especially the one where it's like on top of the pile of bodies. I always thought that was like a direct reference to like the Doom, uh, commercial art. So the fact that uh, it's, that it's just like you just reach that point on your own makes it kind of even funnier. Yeah. <laughs> you know, honestly, I was always more of a Duke Nukem guy, which of course shines through in my comic book Butch Gilligan, which I'm sure we're gonna get into. And he also was standing on a pile of bodies, if you remember that cover. Yes, yes, I do. Okay. I think maybe that was on the back of my brain. Are you going? Oh, people is, are saying louder. They want loud, to hear the shooting. Is the uh, I mean, oh I no no no? I, I turned it down just a little bit so we could talk. They're, they're being oh, assholes. Gotcha, Don't gotcha. worry about it. They're, they do that. <laughs> just a warning. They do that. Um. So you're. Uh. Actually, let's just play the clip and then I'll ask you a little bit because I have a question. Okay. Cool.
Okay, this is this is Ethan Klein um, fully and completely defeated by the cartoon that we just watched. It had been around oh, for yeah, years dude. at this point, but after Elon got Zitter and allowed this cartoon to propagate, because Jack would sweep it up if it got reported. But mm-hmm. at this point, Ethan is having to deal with this, this video being posted to every single one of his replies, especially because the, the Palestine-Israel thing had kicked off, and he had, like, yeah. pro-Palestine people submitting Sven's comic to him, and he was, like, genuinely anguished over it. So we're going to watch his reaction. Yeah. I played this. this is a great clip. This is a great clip. And, you know, when you when you say... Anyway, that that's whatever. That's a whole different conversation, but... Um, <clears throat> I was just there was one tweet I saw and this isn't the first time I saw it but I saw someone post it and it was getting lots of likes and the, you know the the beautiful irony of this is so it's a video a cartoon somebody created who put a lot of fucking effort into making a cartoon of Ela and IDF Uniform with a he's automatic like, weapon. I'll pause it for a second. He's like vomiting on his words as he tries to to get that out. He's just like so broken that his um his Tourette's or whatever is just in yeah, over it's, overdrive. It's, it's, yeah, this Tourette's twitching is in overdrive in this clip, which rules. And, oh, then he played you know, it too. She's okay. all. <laughs> he he's got it? like that kind of Nazi Jewish propaganda face, and she's just killing. Kids, she's just mowing down his uh, Palestinian babies. And what's fun? What's kind of? I don't know. It's fu- I. It's definitely not funny. I don't know what it is. You guys tell me. I know that that shit was made by Nazis, like literal Nazis. Mm-hmm. And the people who I saw, who are tweeting it this time, were leftists. Mm-hmm. So I saw Nazis and leftists clapping hands together to say. You know, fuck, fuck Israel. We agree on that. Let's clap it up, brother. And that was a weird, uh, that was just a weird feeling for me. And I uh, was in a pretty bad shape. And, um, so I, I, I've been trying to erase Twitter. I've been trying all weekend. You Do you guys know how, and by the way, I, I, I can't, thank you. I can't deactivate my account because it makes my there? handle yes. open, which is insane. Oh, yeah, I wasn't able to that, hear that would be like, insane. Go ahead. So let some. No, it's uh, you won't be able playing? to hear the. Yeah, it's it's um, it's got a little oh. bit left. I was actually trying to find a um, a Jew like a contemporary <laughs> depiction of Jewish women, and there's really. <laughs> Not that much, and it's like it's just it's not even close. It's not even close. It's just like what he wants people to perceive this as because he doesn't want his wife's service yeah. in the IDF to be like yeah looked at like that. I don't know. It's just now he also said this was this was made by a whole studio of Nazis. First of all, I made this by myself in one sitting, in one evening. I animated that whole whole freaking thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And yeah, I think if you think about it, what's so shocking to him is that actually the quality is so good, right? Because it's not just well, any he seems old meme. Taken aback by it in the beginning, he says like someone put a lot of fucking effort into this because yeah. he can't he well, can't I'm say it was like oh it's asked a little no yeah I put a lot of effort in my work you know what I'm saying and it's then he had to take it shitty down shitty little cartoon it's not a soy jack it's like a proper like production yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that makes it even more funny in my opinion did he already mention the part where yeah and then left wingers and Nazis yeah. were clapping together did he say that already yeah yeah that's 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 where I ended up that because it's like yes. so, he's like, that's that's what yeah. got to him is that like it's not just like oh he can dismiss it oh it's just the stupid right wingers that are posting this but when it's both sides like no we both don't like you you're, you're just an asshole yeah. <laughs> he's like Fuck and, you. And, and what is his instinct right so he here you have a piece of artwork right undeniably a beautiful piece of art that brings both sides of the political aisle together which is rare that never happens okay so now it finally happened and what is his instinct shut it down yeah no, they he, need to shut it down they need to get rid of it he mentions that he, he goes directly to like YouTube corporate and they fought with him for a bit and like, well, it's it's really like a, a commentary about a, a foreign nation's military. And it's like, you can't yeah. really censor that for grounds of being anti-Semitic just because it happens to be the IDF. Nobody would bat a fucking eye if it was like the Lebanese armed forces or whatever. Exactly. But yeah. he got his way. It was, it was taken down. It had like a, how many views did it have that short? 
Oh, I don't really remember. But yeah, okay, by the way, first of all, I think it's also important to mention that YouTube initially did say it's valuable artistic expression. Then when he didn't get his way, what he did was he went into one of his private discords or whatever, and he drummed up his, or his Reddit or whatever, and he actually had to drum up his fan base to do a mass reporting, and that's how he managed to get it taken down eventually. Yeah. I mean, that's, so, that's pretty know, fucking sneaky. common. That's basically what he does all the time. Yeah, sneaky little tactics. But yeah, we should mention, because I didn't even really realize this, he left Twitter because of this cartoon, and he's still gone, apparently. Yeah, um, I've I've checked Which... every so often. He's remained completely off X since since this dropped. He fully so, committed to guys, it. W is in the chat. I think I can take credit for this. I chased H three H three off of Twitter. That's my doing. I need to put that on my Butch Gilligan two campaign page because yeah, I do think that's a pretty good uh, selling point. Yeah, it's a public Fuck service. <laughs> <laughs> it's a public service. <laughs> Yeah, I remember yeah, what a freaking you know. right before he left even. He was in this drama where a bunch of his fans were like harassing some woman into like suicide and he's like, "Well, you can't you can't right. blame me. I'm not like coordinating this." And then he coordinates flagging videos down yeah, and right. shit. What well, he fucking does. That's what he fucking that's what he does all the time, this sneaky little bastard. But yeah, he's gone now, guys. You're welcome. <laughs> I did it for you. But yeah, so that's that's one of the cartoons. The Eli Klein cartoon is... Uh, I mean, thank God that you keep showing. Because the most important thing for me is at the top of my importance hierarchy when it comes to my art is that people get to see it. So that's the most important. Which for me has proven to be very difficult. Because people... My, my shit gets fucked with every time. So that cartoon, I can't have it up on any of my channels. I so always take it down immediately. There's probably some kind of a behind-the-scenes hound. That's on my case. So yeah, I thank you for that. I think it's really cool that you uh, that you've made it into this big meme. Uh, I'm I'm happy to help because it's it's good. <laughs> I wouldn't play it if it wasn't good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was talking to you earlier because uh, yeah, you mentioned you showed the the Ching Chong cartoon, which by the way, people call that racist. That was actually, and I've explained this a bunch of times, but. This was made during uh, COVID, the height of go COVID, and there was this meme going on called like. Uh, COVID Ching, Corona Chan. COVID Chan or something? Uh, Corona Chan. And it was just this cute little tee hee anime girl with like virus ball pom poms. And I just didn't think that really covered the load of like this uh, virus, this China, China virus. So I made my own disgusting version of it. That's what that is. It's a personification of this Chinese virus. But yeah, of course, uh, the Chinese didn't really like that one as much. No, you always end up offending someone. Because the, the the ace Asians always want to make everything cute. It's up to Western artists to make everything like ugly and scary. <laughs> yeah, especially the Europeans who like doing that. You know, I grew up with like Amsterdam smut comics. You know, yeah, it's one of my main Dutch. inspirations. They have weird art in, in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yeah, that's the stuff that I grew up with. And back then, it was okay. In the nineties, like gross out humor was uh, that was the thing. Like Ren and Stimpy. Everything on like the MTV cartoons and stuff like that, Beavis and Butthead, that was the shit. But now if you make something like that, you, you're called a racist, of course. You're being called a racist for everything, which I don't give a fuck about. They can, uh, they can call me that all day long. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I may, okay, speaking of racism, maybe you should see that cartoon. This is another example of a cartoon of mine, the, the, the N-word one, which recently... I haven't actually seen this one, that so one. this will be new for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people probably have because this one went. This this one went. It, it, okay, so recently it went viral on TikTok. It got like 17 million views. Of course, they uh, they cropped out my tag, so uh, none of that uh, audience comes in my direction. Which fucking sucks. Here's the thing again. Like I said, right? So the most important thing is that it gets seen. So I like that. But here's the problem with that. If I would get some of that uh, uh, audience, it would actually. Um, entice me to make new art but right now like what am i doing if i'm just make art i put a lot of effort in and throw it into the void and you know what i'm saying yeah so i feel like when there it comes has to, to be these... some way to capitalize on people sharing your stuff even if they try to crop out the artist tags um because i think that your, your yeah, stuff has yeah. like a, a propensity because again it's really high quality so people tend to share it more just because it it, it lands better um mm -hmm. you have to probably have to experiment a little bit with watermarking and shit 
Yeah, I know. But yeah, so we uh, make it an NFT. Yes, but again, like I'm saying, again, I'm happy that people get to see it. But yeah, it would be nice to get a little bit of recognition. It's not because I need to have my uh, my horn tooted. But yes, you know, if you want to have an artist make more of this type of art, yeah, you need to incentivize that. But, uh, you know, for right now, whenever I make like a super transgressive cartoon, it actually is a net negative for me. You know what I'm saying? I lose my channels. I lose money. It's just a mega disaster every single time. But I can't help myself. And but again, yeah, so do you get banned off uh, is, Twitter is, still for the, the cartoons? No, no, not Twitter. Twitter has been okay, okay, actually. Twitter has been pretty solid for me uh, throughout, to be honest. It's just been everything else for me that's been fucked yeah. up. The only rule, and I, and I keep doing this because I have very bombastic rhetoric, you have to avoid any implication of violence in any way, shape, or form. If I say something like mm. drop dead, I get fucking banned from Zitter. <laughs> so, oh, I, and I can't control yeah. myself. It's, it's just where I go naturally. So I'm always yeah, in the no. timeout box. <laughs> I mean, come on. I, I got the, my, 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 uh, my Sven streams, which is where we do like a wacky a caricature stream where we get into a lot of... Wacky hijinks and trouble, Sven streams. Uh, that's my streaming channel that we started, but I got striked on that right now because I simply showed that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu has a trophy sitting on his desk uh, of a uh, ivermectin vaccine syringe. Really? Have you seen that? No, yeah, I have so not. So fucking Netanyahu has a goddamn glass box on his desk with a displayed uh, ivermectin syringe uh, as a trophy. Now we showed that and we goofed on it. Boom. Uh, stream taken down, channel strike because of uh, uh, vaccine misinformation or some shit. I wow. didn't even know they were still doing that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. It. It, it's so weird because you see like all these ghosts, like someone uploads a video and you just see like the ghosts of like censorship past creeping up with like little warning boxes about like coronavirus vaccines. And I'm like, who the fuck asked? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What the fuck? I, I honestly thought that whole Corona vaccine stuff—they were kind of gonna getting rid of that uh, as a merit for bannings. But I guess that's still happening. I did notice that you're allowed to say, can I, "Can I swear on this one?" Yes. Right now. So you're allowed to say "tranny" again. Tranny. You're allowed to say that one again on YouTube. Really? I even sometimes drop the end bomb. Yeah, tranny. You can say openly again. I see. Uh, what happens? I think is sometimes they kind of release the pressure relief valve. When they see like people on the right getting like you know, and you can kind of look at like um, what's the, what's fucking the Ben Shapiro's network called again? I forget what it is. Oh God, uh, the, the pundit. What the fuck the is daily? it going? Daily know. Wire, yeah. Yeah. yeah so whatever they're, they're basically they sort of dictate what's kosher in, in like conservatard circles. So when they make a documentary about trannies, you sort of get to say tranny again. And I think now they're they're releasing the pressure relief valve a little bit on black people. You get to you get to kind of be a little bit racist again, which is odd. Anything to keep the attention off of them, you know what I'm saying? Wink, wink, yeah, wink. Google's in a hard spot right now. They're being um, attacked by the Department of Justice. They want to break them up. Oh, really? Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they yeah. do make a little bit of concessions because it's like the. Department of Justice is trying to, to cleave them, especially the ad network, off of their search. So, uh, something I was going to talk about today. Um, but, All right, cool. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, was, you, you, you want to show the N-word cartoon real quick? Because we were yes. going to drift off too far from this topic otherwise. Yeah, let's... Anyways, it. people get it. I'm banned from my art. I'm just a poor, lonely little artist, and I keep ba get banned a lot. Let me... Sorry, give me a second. Um... As I mentioned, I I don't usually have a way to play uh, Video WM phones? Yeah. WMVs yeah, in, in particular. That. That's, a, that's a strange thing. But... I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I sent you that one. It might have an MP4 too. Do you have VLC media player? Um, Yeah, but OBS doesn't capture I have MPV and I think that works. I'm going to play that real quick. Uh, all right. Let's check it. Hopefully we can uh, figure it out. Chat's loving it. They're going nuts. <laughs> yeah, this is the Avengers of racism, but it's just two guys. Oh, it who else? Like who that. else would be one of the Avengers of racism? Hmm. Jesus. Do you have this one, like YouTube? Yeah. No. Again, I, I'm oh, yeah, not allowed it's, to it's... show. I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. I might have to play the. 
No, let me let me try one more we thing. Can describe it. We can okay. describe <laughs> it. <laughs> Sorry, I I thought I had it working, but it did this really cheeky thing where it just decided that I would only show the first frame, what and the then once flip? I started pl once I play it, it just doesn't play another frame. What the frickin' H? Wait, maybe I have like a different version of it? Let me see. Uh, gosh darn it, probably not actually. Uh, four, 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 maybe this, what is this? What kind of... Oh no, that's not. Well, we might have to chalk that one up to a little L. <laughs> it might not be possible. People have that scene no, as like two black guys walk no, into a store. It's I got it. I got it. It's working. It. Oh, yeah. Okay, go go go. Okay. Uh, uh, again, you won't be able to hear it or see it, so I'll just tell you it's forty-five seconds. Sure. Viewer discretion just let me know when, uh, is advised. When <laughs> you ever heard of two black guys walking down the street? One's got ninety-eight cents. One has a dollar, and it says, uh, "We get." There's a sign that says, "We could turn you white for ninety-nine cents." So they make the plan that the guy with the dollar will go in. When he comes out, if it's good, he'll give the penny to the guy, and he'll go in and do it. So the guy goes in with his dollar, he pays, he comes out. He looks amazingly white. Looks just like a white person. You know this joke? No. And he goes to the guy, and the guy goes, he goes, oh, man, that looks great. He goes, all right, give me the penny. I'm going to go in. And he goes, get a job, nigger. <laughs> <laughs> this is just animating like a, a black people comedy bit. How does that get you canceled? Yeah. I, I I do appreciate, by the way, that the the outrageously white man is just Butch Killigan. That's a good tie-in. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's a prototype of Butch Killigan. Yeah, for people who don't, maybe should we can get into Butch Killigan after this and uh, talk a little bit about indie comics. Yeah, for sure. I don't. Is the video done playing? Do yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, it, oh, that's okay, why I said yeah. it's just it's just like an actual like skit from like a like a black podcast or yeah. something. Like, yeah, you just it's, animated. Like a, it's like a street. It's a street joke. Yeah. By the way, this this cartoon is mega old. Was, what is this? When did it make it? It's like 2014, maybe. And now it's resurfacing and getting uh, getting like millions and millions of views. Of, you know, like I explained. And this was from yeah. People are saying Big J Okerson. I work sometimes with the Legion of Skanks guys. I, I do all the art for Skanks Fest in uh, New York. Sven, you made this? Yeah, I did. See, a lot of people don't know I made that's See, that's the whole gosh darn problem I'm trying to illustrate. Yeah, like, all these viral cartoons credits. and nobody knows it's me. <laughs> um, but yeah, Legion of Skanks. Legion of Skanks. Um, what was I saying? I forgot. Help me out Butch here. Killigan. I forgot what I was talking about. You want to talk about oh, yeah, Butch Killigan? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe if you can, can you like uh, pull up maybe that uh, that trailer, that launch trailer? Yeah, because yeah, I've been getting into into comic books right now um, because animation takes so much work. I'm working with the Iconic Comics; they're my publisher. We released our first book. Everybody got their book; it got fulfilled. I don't release books, by the way. Where my I don't do like Kickstarter, so it's like, please fund my dream, and then you give me a bunch of money and you never get anything. No, my book is already done. You're basically pre-ordering the book. You know, it's like 120 plus pages. It's a big, fat, square-bound book. You're going to get it in a couple of months after the campaigns are done. Uh, yeah, maybe we can show the trailer, maybe the campaign page a little bit. That would be nice yes. if people can oh. actually support actual, actual art, actual independent comics. Because you were going over, what's that guy's name again? The black guy? Eric Juneteenth. Juneteenth. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> Eric Juneteenth. I call him that, please. Call him that from now on, okay? Eric Juneteenth. You were, you, were, uh, you were going over that, and you mentioned Butch Gilligan, which is very nice. I did. Did you watch yeah, that review of that comic? I did. I did. And then I saw Ethan Van Skyver also uh, checked it out, which was cool of him. He endorsed Butch Gilligan. He said Butch Gilligan, back in yeah. the day before Woke Comics, it would have uh, received an Eisner Award. No, I never heard of that. Sounds very Jewish, but I'm honored nonetheless. <laughs> That's a uh, Eisner is one of the Disney CEOs. Oh yeah, that guy, that guy, of course, yeah, Eisenstein, these type of fellas. But yeah, uh, yeah, I, I listen. Uh, perhaps I would have won an award. Who knows? Nowadays we're in the in the era of indie comics, of which Eric July, of course, is uh, the top dog. D A W G, and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you showed those pages that actually prompted me to actually check it out for the first time. So on my stream, I also go through the pages. Um, yeah, maybe um, I should just get into this right now. My, should I give you my comment, but my thoughts on this on on the state of indie comics real quick let's, before we watch let, Butch Killian? Watch the no? I'll do the trailer first, right. and then I'll put the Indiegogo right. up or the Kickstarter, and I'm, then I'm you can talk with that as the, the background. Going nuts. 
I'm going no. crazy, dude. Okay, All right, 37 go. seconds. I'll play it. Revenge awakens in Butch Killigan 2. The the trailer is very topical because there's like like robot sodomy and the Joker 2 just came out. So you're kind of stealing their thunder right now. <laughs> Wait, does he get fucked by a robot though? I haven't um, seen it yet. No, he gets fucked by a jail guard, but it's the like, same kind of vibe, I guess. Yeah. Which is way more yes. exotic, I guess. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Of course. So Butch Gilligan. Butch Gilligan. For those of you who don't know, it's like a cyberpunk story. Think of it as like Demolition Man. It's a guy. Okay. The first book is the setup. Uh, you need to read the first book, dude. To, how to do you, How do people get? I, I tried to get a physical copy of your first book, and I couldn't find it. Are you, have you like sold out of the physical here, copy? Here's the thing. First of all, you people, people, regular people can get it on IconicComics.com. They got to go to the web store. Maybe you can pull that one up. IconicComics.com. You can get physical copies there. But you, Josh, if you sent me your P.O. box or whatever you got after, the, after this uh, show, I'll, uh, I'll have them send you like two uh, copies of book one and two physical if you want. Sure, that sounds great. Actually, um, I, I pledge to your Kickstarter. I only need the one. Oh, oh babe. Well, you know what? We're going to send you some extra goodies then. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, everybody needs to go back this because this is the only actual transgressive book with a vision. With, it's actually a creative vision that's happening. It's playing out in front of you. Uh, and and maybe yeah. Let me let me explain this. Well, right? so well I, I mean, you oh, yeah, you yeah. you did the 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 story, the storyboarding, and the art, right? So you're not like offloading anything to anybody else. Yeah, right. No, I write the book. I I draw the book. I do all the marketing. I do everything. I edit the trailers. Everything is mine. Okay. And yeah, that goes into so. Okay, so we have guys like Eric July. Okay. These people, and yeah, he is, people are right. He's the only one who actually sent out a book. No, actually, he's not the only one. I managed to also deliver people a book. My previous book came out, every, rave reviews, on time, everything fine. <laughs> but um, these people, they and Gamer, or what is it, Gate? No, Comics Gate, they Comics distinguish Gate, yeah. themselves by separating themselves from the mainstream. We all know their selling point is mainstream comics nowadays have gone woke, they've gone paused, they've gone BIPOC. Gay, queer, whatever, okay? <laughs> then you got these guys, they go indie, which means independent. And they distinguish themselves because they no longer, they're, they, they've, they've, they, they lost the chains. They're no longer shackled to, to the corporate top-down control, okay? And then apparently the biggest example of this is the Ripperverse, which to me looks like the most generic devoid of any personality or any authorship is this really the best we can do is that really what it is do you, you know have, what i'm saying do and, and you have a beef with eric july i'm kind of picking up on that no not really <laughs> no. i actually i actually really don't and and to be fair i actually tend to think it's a little bit in bad taste for me as a fellow comic book creator <laughs> to shit on his, on this guy but again, you inspired me. This is your fault because you inspired me to look at these pages, and I was just like, "What the fuck is this? Like, this is just nothing." Okay, so um, that was actually <laughs> yeah. Gumroad content. I did that like for people that like in private, and then it got leaked out, and everybody mm -hmm. shared it around. So, oh. in, in case the audience is unaware, I have in my physical right here in my closet, I have one of the only comic books I've ever owned and read, which is Isom Two. And it is a it is a bad book. Um, the first one is is more grounded and 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 like it's intriguing. It's, it has like a little plot about like a mystery. That's like oh that's cool. Um, the second mm. one is like fucking batshit. I, I have no fucking idea how nobody stopped him and said you can't do this. This doesn't make any sense. So um, <laughs> after yeah, okay, so I only checked the first one. I thought that was horrible, but I might have to check the second one. Oh, too, if you then. didn't like the first one, the second one, you, um, you would hold in utter I love contempt. It. Oh God! Christ. Yeah, I was saying, I the name alone, I saw. I was like, that sounds like something you'd see on the side of a cement truck, you know, like uh, yeah, just like a business name or something. 
Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I some business to business solutions or something. It doesn't really, <laughs> it's not really a real uh, superhero y type of name. It's named after you know his grandfather. <laughs> it, it's named after his grandpa. It's, yeah, Aww. his name was Isom. You're still you say... <laughs> yeah, that's a real superhero in the community. <laughs> yeah. Um... Wait, I didn't so, know wait, his grandpa's name was Sa Isom? Yeah, it's like either his grandfather or somebody. It's named Aww. after somebody in his family. So when people give him shit for the name, he always says, I named after my grandpappy or something. You know what? It's working on me. I'm, I'm afraid to criticize. It. Okay. Well, yeah. People, <laughs> like, people, listen, it's not just you and I. A lot of people are criticizing the subpar quality of the book. And I think even he started coping with like, hey, listen, uh, N-word. I ain't no artist. I'm a businessman. And now he's just kind of doing like that business type of cult. Yeah. Like, well, what he's doing now is that I, at, at the end of Isom 2, I said, I don't know if there's an Isom 3, but I mean, I'll read it because <laughs> what are they going to do? How could you possibly salvage this storyline? And then I went to their site and there is no Isom 3. And what he's done instead is that he's used the money that he's made man. to hire writers and artists to do their own like subplots in the same universe. So there's a bunch uh -huh. of different Isom universe books out there, but um, the idea. only one written by Eric July is the actual Isom 1 and 2. And um, the uh -huh. Isom, Isom 2 is just bad, and I can't really... You know, I, I'm not even trying to like trash it. Like I want, I want to like Eric you know. July and his comics in particular because there's a lot of people that just are obsessed with hating him that are assholes. And I, I don't want to say things bad about him sure. that like makes them happy. You no, know? no, no. But but I, I I'm not no, gonna no, no. lie let's, and be like this makes sense. Wait, wait. <laughs> Me personally, I don't just ha I'm not hating. Okay, well, I was accused of hating by another uh, comic artist called uh, Martina Margota. If you heard of this bimbo, this internet grifter. Right wing internet grifter, Lady Alchemy. You heard of that? No, no? sorry. <laughs> Anyways, she also fucking sucks. And uh, I just reviewed <laughs> one of her things, and then she called me a crazy stalker and a hater. No, listen, I'm an artist, and I think it's my full right to review art and give my honest opinion. Okay, truth is my highest ideal. So what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna suck up to anybody. I'm an island. I'm standing here on my own. I hope you guys can support Butch Gilligan Volume 2. You're not going to fucking regret it because this, listen, like I was saying, if ISOM is the pinnacle of what happens when the artist gets unshackled by corporate top down control, then we're in big trouble, okay? Because th that's the most successful thing. Listen, Butch Gilligan. In this in this cyberpunk crazy future that Butch Gilligan wakes up and you're gonna have like uh, uh, self-replicating retarded clones that get more retarded with each iteration. Oh, you know it reminded you're me. Have, um, in the Chinese, art, we have Chinese. If you scroll down, the Chinese human mosquito hybrids. Have you seen those guys? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it smells a tongue on a mosquito. <laughs> um. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um go ahead what is there was um is there like a troon jack i i saw like a troon jack in one of the drawings is yeah that accurate? yeah oh, there you, is. Should, you should pull you should pull out one of the trailers that i, I send i send you one of the videos it goes into that it's called the ultra city citizen yeah these and are like, like jacks in your style they're they're distinct enough that you don't it's not super obvious no, 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 but the more you look at it you're like not, yeah these are like the the soy uh, a goy slop consuming fat pieces of lards that can't stand on their own accord. They need like exoskeletons. They have a heart <laughs> pump device uh, uh, on their chest that makes them uh, able to breathe. They have to pay a ticker fee subscription, sort of like Netflix, to be able to have your heart pump. And you need to get like uh, certain uh, prescription services, like you have your active or semi active lifestyle ticker rate plan that gives you a certain amount of pumps a day. Listen, yeah. this is going to get fucking nuts. Go buy your copy of Butch Gilligan 2 right now, mother, mother frickers. Support something real. Come on, can we just have something cool for once? Instead of all this gay ISOM stuff. <laughs> the, um, the visuals are, like, really psychedelic and trippy. They're really well done because you're flipping through it and you're like, the, like the, 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 and there's homages to, um, like, famous artwork. Like, the one where the jaw is, like, a, 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 yes. a swirl. That's, like... I want to say that's in Belgium. It's like in a museum in Belgium. It's like, it's yeah, like listen, it's, it's, well, I am. Um, listen, I am an art dork dweeb. Okay. So I think you're thinking of Hieronymus Bosch, which is a Dutch uh, uh, artist who made like a middle aged, um, in the middle ages, he did, made, did like depictions of hell. 
So I'm definitely inspired. I'm inspired by a lot of different aspects, but yes, I'm an art dork. And another thing that you should know, by the way, because people get sometimes get the wrong impression. They think it's just, again, I explained this on my um, one of my streams, like Butch Gilligan definitely is like a multi-layered cake, okay? So yes, it is this masculine power fantasy, off the wall, crazy action and, uh, and, and satire. And yeah, you can, if you're a retarded mongoloid, you can, <laughs> you can enjoy the top layer of all the action and stuff. But there's several deeper layers, okay? It starts to become more and more a psychological thriller or even a horror, basically. But again, we're setting things up. This is only the second book. The second book, it's Butch. He starts off, he wakes up in this dystopian future. And yeah, the first thing is like... He wakes up in his hospital bed, and in order for the AI that controls the hospital to let him go, they need to measure his vital signs. And what better way to do that with like a big drill thermometer dildo that's going to sodomize his asshole? Now, that's a situation for a character to have to get out of in the beginning of a book. And that's what I like. I like throwing a character in the middle of danger and then trying to get him to see how he gets out of it. Because I, I think that's what a story is supposed to be. It's, type of, it's a type of survival guide, okay? That's what makes a story fun. And one of the big problems that is actually happening with mainstream comics that people hate is that these comics become propaganda pieces and the characters become propaganda pieces. Like famously with like the new Star Wars movies, right? So they put like a female lead front and center and she's not as much as a character as a propaganda piece. So she can't really have any flaws because she represents an ideology. And they're trying yeah. to shove that down your throat. So she can't have any flaws. And, and, and that's, that makes not for a very interesting story. You know what I'm saying? Like Ronald McDonald, you're never going to see him get fat and get like heart disease. And <laughs> that is why he's such a boring fucking guy. And that's what most characters are nowadays. And then you have dumb people who jump in on this indie trend and they don't even know what they're doing. They claim, yeah, we're fighting against a man. By doing what? Making another superhero comic? Another bland, cookie-cutter nonsense? You're not even doing anything new. You're not even revisiting the genre or doing, doing anything. It's just nothing. Well, with Eric July, you know I get the sense, as someone who, who's never really read comics, that he, he really enjoys comics, and he likes a lot of the tropes in comics. So when he made his own comic, he's like, well, of course, my comic is going to have this trope, and it's going to have this trope. It's going to have all my favorite things from all my favorite series. And that's really what mm -hmm. it feels like to me. And I'm kind of curious. That's interesting that you say that. That's interesting that you mm -hmm. say, sorry to cut you off, because that reminds me of soul food, you know? People say black people have soul food, but it's basically just them combining their favorite things. It's like a, a delicious Belgian waffle and fried chicken on top. <laughs> you know are, you, are you saying that <laughs> Eric July's comic is over-seasoned? <laughs> is that where you're going yes. with that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, okay, should I get into my controversial opinion about uh, about Eric July's success? Oh, what, uh, let me ask you a question first, and then you oh, can yeah. go into that. Um, yeah. I'm really curious, are, were you were you big into comics like that, or is comic books no. just something that you've kind of, like, taken the mantle of, because you're like, I bet I can do this better than everybody else right now? Well, first and foremost, so I'm a storyteller, I'm an animator, but animation takes a lot of work. It's a huge amount, heap amount of work. One of the first brought... Uh, um, uh, uh, steps of the process of an animation is the storyboarding phase, which basically is creating a comic book. So for me, it just feels like throwing off the weights and me being able to get my ideas out there in a more efficient medium. So that's number one. Secondly, whether I was like reading a ton of comic books as a, as a kid, not really, not the comic books that you're thinking of. I wasn't reading, reading Superman or all the Goy Slop stuff. I was reading Joop Klepzeiker, Google it, it's crazy, Amsterdam shit, it's like this down on this luck, like, dweeb, fucking prostitutes and shit like that. I was reading, like, I did read Spawn, I read, I read Spawn a little bit, um, and, and I read a bunch of manga too, I read like Berserk, it's one of my favorite things, and of course I was a big fan of like Batman, the animated series. Um, that's that's sort of more like the accumulation of my um, my inspiration behind behind this stuff. But I wasn't like a huge pulp comic book type of guy. I wasn't like collecting X Men or something like that. Not really. So I come from it from a fresh point of view. Yeah, that's what I, it's kind of what I thought, and it's interesting that you you phrase it like that. That it's just sort of like it's the storyboarding from animation, just like emphasized on that point because and that makes a lot of sense because then you can churn out like an animation without needing an entire team 
to to animate it. You don't need yes. like an Indonesian sweat sweatshop to to fill in all exactly. the cells for you. Exactly. Now, who knows what might happen down the line? You know what I'm saying? But yes, my main focus right now is to get the story out there, and it's going to resonate more and more with people. I think as they start to get what this is. But yeah, it's gonna it's gonna take a couple of books. And by the way, if people back campaign number two right now for Butch Gilligan number two, you can still add on a physical copy of Butch Gilligan number one as well at a discount. By the way, so when you're at checkout, you can do like an add on, and you get like a twenty percent discount. So this this shit is dirt cheap too. But you gotta back you gotta back the real true independent voices here. Which I don't think there's many of. We scrolled during my launch party, we scrolled through the Kickstarter comic book launch uh, page, and it's all just titties and like uh, gay sex. It's so, it, yeah. so that's the thing, like the indie scene is is not much better, if at all, than the uh, corporate. Yeah, that, that's something you know too. Is that with comics, it feels like a very like hypersexual medium, and I was kind of surprised that you didn't like include any like cheesecake. I want to say I'm trying to remember. I don't think there was any like cheesecake or anything in the comic. Wait, what is cheesecake? Cheesecake is like is some... uh, in Japanese, it would be like etchy. It's like mildly erotic, but not like full on. You oh. know what I mean? No, look, look, the way the way I handle. So f first of all, this book is not going to use any vernacular of the day. It's not going to talk about, oh, you woke piece of shit. This comic is going to stand the test of time. The type of humor, the inspiration for the type of humor, I think would get as close to uh, somebody like Paul Verhoeven, fellow Dutch guy, the director who made like Robocop and Starship Trooper stuff like that is very much a satirical style of humor. Now, I'm not going to sh shy away in this story when the story needs a pair of tits or a rape or whatever. Uh, I'm not going to shy away from that, obviously, but it's, I'm not going to just arbitrarily try to shock you necessarily. Well, maybe. Sometimes, I think when I think it's funny, because, okay, so my editor, I, I send it to my editor. <laughs> and yeah, the editor, one of the comments was, there's a lot of butt stuff. And I was like, yeah, fuck you, nigga. Yeah, there's a lot of butt stuff. That's funny. By the way, not gay sex, but okay, you know, the book starts <laughs> off with a near anal rape with, with our hero yeah. chained to a bed. Yeah, you have See to be careful because when, when you say that, it reminds me of a note that was left by the editor on Milo Yiannopoulos's like, autobiography or something, and the editor oh, just boy. left a note like, uh, <laughs> this is neither the time nor the place for yet another black dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not like that. No, it's not like, okay, look, so there's one scene where, like, one of these, it's always in context, okay, so you have these guys, these, uh, these goy slop fat so soy boys, mm -hmm. and then one of them steps up to the hospital counter, and it's like, oh, yeah, uh, you know, I got some pink sock problems during a non-looped intercourse section, my, my rectum was left, uh, uh, dangling like a pink sock, you know, because they're all there, they're all at the, at the hospital, as you can see here, complaining about little minor, uh, ailments. So that will be an example of butt stuff, but it's not, I'm not like promoting gay sex, obviously, like Milo Yiannopoulos, which is, of course, a, a Jewish agent. We all know that. Um, before I ask about your opinion on Eric July, uh, chat has a popular request, and I would actually like your artist input on something, just real quick. Uh, this is a guy, sure. he's been around for a very long time, and he has had basically no traction on his comics because they're very weird. Uh -huh. And so I started uh, showing them on my stream, and he started to get some replies and stuff. And I want you, out of any of the last seven comics that he's done, just pick one mm -hmm. at random. And I want you to give me, tell me which one you, you picked, and then uh, give me your right. take on it. Well, I, 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 you don't, we don't have screen sharing uh, up, so I'm, I'm not sure how we're going to do this. I have to look at the stream, and there's going to be just, a bit no, of no, Just go to, I sent it by Discord. Oh, you just sent me a link. link. Uh -huh. Just pick any oh, yeah, of those okay. and tell me which one of the end of the fucking world parts you picked, and then I'll bring it up on Wait, screen. Dude. Okay, uh, let's see. Let's see this. Pick one that appeals to you, that jumps out to you off the page. Right, you know what? I'm just gonna go with like one, two, three, four, because I like that uh, that pink, uh, pink skinned guy. Let's do the fourth one. Okay. Okay, I've got that up. Okay. 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 So, well, I'm just. Uh, do I have to read the text, or can I just look at this as an artistic thing? Just, so what I see just, here. Uh, 
If you if you would like to like just skim through it, you don't have to read it all. Just uh, skim through. Let it. me give you my first first impressions first. Okay? okay, first impressions. First impressions is this. So I think on the internet there's two schools of artistry mm-hmm. uh, uh, to speak in a binary way. Okay, of course there's a lot of gray areas there. Now I can tell, and I have to read this comic obviously. Okay, so there is the call arts Steven Universe type of queer coded LGBTQ artists out there. Mm-hmm. And then you have the new grounds, Zach Hadel, Oni and G style influenced uh, Gen Z artist out there. Now this is obviously the latter. This is a uh, very much Oni and G Psychic Pebbles inspired style. I can tell that. I can also tell you this: the guy is fairly talented. Now I could even go as far as to give you his age. I think this guy is. 24, 25 years old. I can tell you that by, by, by the way his line art works. Um, okay, so that's my initial uh, first impression. And then, let's see, do you want me to just read this real quick? Do you want me to read it out loud? Just, just skim through it if you want. You don't have to. I mean, we got to read it. We got to read it. Okay. We got to give this guy his props. Okay, so uh, 79 days until the election. Mm-hmm. And the panel goes, what kind of fill are you putting in the school library? Sir, that's a Chinese takeout menu, and this is a Hardee's. Well, I'm taking this straight to the press. Soon the whole world will know about your brainwashing campaign. Pretty funny. <laughs> wow, this is the news anchor. He goes, wow. And just for speaking up, they ask you to leave the school grounds? It's preposterous, Wessie. Do I look like a threat to children? I, uh, well... So this is is sort of like taking the shit, the the piss out of like a conservator media, I guess. Yeah. Listen, if you don't want your kids speaking Chinese and being brainwashed into their strange oriental ways, then lock your child in my basement for safety. Which is also funny because, of course, conservators, their main enemy, their taught is the Chinese, the Chai Coms, which, of course, we all know is not very accurate. Would you mind reading some of these words so the parents at home know what to look out for? Listen to this shit, Wessie. Dim sum. Disgusting. Chow mein. Ugh. Dumplings. What the fuck? Wessie, what's happening to you? These words. Those cursed Chinese words are turning me into a lesbian. Oh no, I must have accidentally activated Chinese magic. Viewers at home, it's too late for me. Turn off your TV. Save yourself from the gay curse. How come the curse didn't make you gay? It's time I told you. Where all our rubber bands get... Listen, this is funny. This is a funny comic. <laughs> Can you give me your interpretation of what um, the joke is in the last frame with the old people? That woman didn't, quote-unquote, turn gay because she was already gay, and she's sort of coming out of the closet. Yeah. And uh, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't necessarily know what she has been doing with the uh, rubber bands because I'm not really that up to snuff with the gay vernacular. But I think it can speak to the imagination, which is actually kind of more funny. Oh, my. You are, like, the biggest Mr. Nubbly advocate. I couldn't even imagine that you would have come out swinging for him. I'm I'm so impressed. (laughs) (laughs) Honestly, I've never seen any of this. Is that, like, the wrong opinion to have? Because I just honestly Um, am reacting to this. I think it's pretty good. There is no wrong or right opinion to have about Mr. Nubbly. I find him uh, fascinating. I'm not sure how old he is. I don't know if you want to take a guess. I'll send you his About Me page. I said 24, 25, I think. I think he's probably a little bit older than that. I want to say he's like 30 something. Really? Yeah. He's, um, he's become, confirmed. He becomes less cute. Yeah. He's confirmed that his, uh, that the, the rubber band thing oh. ha- has no actual meaning. So it is just sort of like leave yeah, it up to I the thought. imagination about, yeah, that's uh, kind of what oh, I thought God. too. But, um, <laughs> we really yeah. sat down and tried to uh, ascribe meaning to it and failed miserably. Yeah, so I'm looking at the guy right now. Yeah, it's sort of like in Demolition Man. Remember when they go like, uh, how do the clamps work or whatever? When they have to go to the toilet because toilet paper has mm-hmm. been replaced with like shelves. Yeah, it's I got something you. Something like that. It's sort of like that where you just kind of have to fill it in, fill in the blanks. I'm looking at the guy. I will say this personally: the older the guy turns out to be, the less charming it becomes to me. Because I thought this was sort of like an up and comer you were showing me, like a guy. Uh, yeah, but I'm. I'm really not sure. He's been at it for a while, but he could have started really young. I don't know. This could also just be like his Vint comics. Like maybe he works for like a comic, like for a a national syndicated. Like he just has to draw what they tell him to draw. 
And then when he gets yeah. home, he just makes the, like the dumbest fucking political comments yeah, that have yeah. ever existed. Uh, it's just like what he enjoys. Yeah, that reminds me. Have you ever seen that vlog? Fuck yeah, John Lasseter. Have you ever seen that famous vlog? No, I haven't. We're, we're like Pixar artists. They came home and they would draw the worst caricature of John Lasseter, the owner, the the, the CEO of uh, Pixar back in the day. Really? Like very old. And it's like super offensive. He's like uh, sucking off uh, Hayao Miyazaki and of Ghibli and stuff. Yeah, it's an old vlog. <laughs> blog called uh, "Fuck Yeah, John Lasseter." That's a fun one to check out on your own time. Yeah, you should not piss off artists because they can draw you doing horrific things. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you want to hear my take on on? Yes, on, I, on, I desperately uh, want to hear Eric July. Your other comic book review mm -hmm. about Eric July. Okay. Now, can we get this off the screen? Put back up the uh, the, yes. uh, the the Butch Gilligan two campaign. And guys, for real, it's, you got it's on Indiegogo as well. We should hate Kickstarter. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, uh, yeah. So on Kickstarter, we have one cover, and then there's the other one is on Indiegogo. It's a variant cover. Now, I am I would say just buy both of them. But anyways, <laughs> so if my theory or my opinion that Eric July's I saw a cartoon is or a comic is subpar and not really an a, a exemplary of what one can do with unbound creativity, right? Uh, which I think we both agree on. Now, how would you then explain the massive success? And by the way, I will say this out of the Ripiverse, there's some cool shit happening, like the guys that are doing these animated trailers, but that's obviously it's like a separate studio that's in Texas, I believe. You know, they and but that doesn't say anything about the source material like it, you could give them anything and they couldn't make it look cool with their animation right that that's not with has nothing to do with with ripperverse to be honest right yeah so there's some cool stuff but we're talking about the comics here and if this is like the pinnacle of unbound indie independent creativity i think we're in trouble so but then yeah how would you uh, uh explain the massive success now here's here comes the controversial opinion that i don't think anybody's talking about I don't think EVS is talking about this, at least. So, the indie scene, these guys, comics, gay, these, these type of guys, rip reverse, they broke off from the uh, mainstream, BIPOC, LGBTQ, black, black Spider-Man, black Superman, black uh, Hulk scene, and they went indie, okay? Now, immediately, mm -hmm. obviously, mainstream media is going to call them racist. Oh, the reason they're breaking off is because they're racist. They just can't... They can't deal with, like, LGBTQ, BIPOC characters, you're racist. Now, the worst thing you can call, and I'm sure you know, a boomer or a Gen Xer is racist, right? They've been primed. It's not even really their fault. They've been brainwashed by television for decades and decades and decades to believe that being called a racist is the absolute worst, to be marked with the scarlet R of racism, that's the worst thing that could ever happen to you. So now here they are with their new comic scene that doesn't like the bipocketification of their, of their favorite comics. And here comes Eric July, the black guy, the token black guy. Now, a lot of these, these, uh, these, these conservatarded uh, Gen X -y boomers, they form their opinion through a black consensus filter, you know? This is a huge trend. You can see this on YouTube, too. You'll have, like... A black guy reacting to like Nirvana or like some white niche hobby, like a black guy that's into Warhammer. And you'll see Gen Xers clapping like seals. Look, look my, my, uh, my little thing is getting the stamp of approval by the, 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 uh, cool black the guy. Negro. Is there, there, the black there. guy. <laughs> the magical Negro is approving of my little thing, right? Which, of course, is a whole new form of psychological cockery. So, yes, I think the reason that Ripovers got uh, so big and successful, and I understand it's very controversial, but it's the truth, is because these white people, these white cock servitards, they basically paid penance by supporting this guy's campaigns <laughs> and therefore, thereby cleansing their new nerdosphere branch off of the Scarlet R word. That's what I think. I like, I can tell, even though a lot of what you say sounds familiar, I can tell that you've developed this on your own in like a bubble of just thinking about it because the way you describe yeah. everything is so d d divorced. Like you don't, you don't use any of the same language and in particular, um, describing it as, as penance, like buying, um, yeah. 
God, what was it called when you bought like forgiveness from the Catholic Church? Like, it's like that's like, yeah, it's like that's like a great way of putting it. You're like you're you're contributing you to something from the cool black guy who's on your side, and yeah. that's your way of, of of buying clemency from from the Pope. Yeah. Yeah. Indulgence. That's, think, that's hey, yes, this is, this is my own take. I don't listen to any comic book things. Now, I have developed this take because my my listeners that are in the chat, they've heard me talk about this like four times at this point. But yes, I have developed this take. This is what I think happened. Now, what do you think? Do, is, there, is there any credence to my theory? Um... I think some of it can just be like you, genuine you... well wishing. Like I hope that this thing sticking it to the man is is going to work out. But I think there's also a part of that where it's like I can because this was a thing during Gamergate, um, where people really tried to go out of their way to like find black people and women that were on their side so they could explicitly. And, and Milo mm. Yiannopoulos, bringing up him, him a second time, uh, heaven forbid, uh, was a great example of this. He was not only Jewish, he was not only gay, but he was also in a gay marriage with a black man. So he's like the yeah. ultimate source of indulgences you support him well you're not anti-semitic you're not homophobic and you're not racist yeah. because he's in a in a in a uh, interracial marriage so yeah he was so like they, the pope they, they, <laughs> lightning rod. they become a lightning rod for any left-wing criticism basically in your little nerdo sphere right yeah, because like, yeah, because okay. you're yeah. trying to protect like your you're divorcing yourself from the mainstream by showing like no really we're we're not bad people now, based yeah, on but, your but it, 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 I think it results in more trouble than it solves because of course you, you're giving a, a lot of credence to to charlatans and grifters. The easy solution to this would just be for us to collectively stop giving a flying fuck about what uh, the left or whatever you want to call it. Uh, what kind of monikers they put on you? Because when they call me a racist, they go, okay, sure, yeah. What is that? What the fuck does that mean? Well, the you issue and the reason why they, they kind of feel like they have to is because if the press has their way and they manage to get that racist thing to stick, you can't process credit cards. You can't be on platforms. That's you true. Know? So that's why that's people true, yeah. do the shuck and jive to try and keep their, we both, their good know, we both know, but you, yeah. you don't chuck and jive, and neither do I, right? If more of us were not chucking and jiving, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, it would be better. But a lot, of, yeah. it's asking a lot of people, you know, like who knows how much you would sell of, of your stuff if you had access to the traditional avenues of yes. Of but here's the problem with that. Here's the problem with that. I can't. I can't. This is me. You know what I'm saying? I'm speak the truth. Butch no, Gilligan. I got you. I can't. Me. I can't, I can't shut it off either. I can't. I can't. I can't watch my fucking mouth. I've tried. I don't fit in anymore. I can't do it. I can't. I can't play by your rules. I'm. I, you either. Like I, I'm sorry. I'll just be homeless before I can figure out some way to shut up. Yeah. Plus, I would say this. I think it's actually the job of the artist to play that role. It's sort of like the. Uh, this is kind of gay and cringe, I guess. I shouldn't even say this, but I was going to say it's like the jester back in the olden times. An artist ought to speak the truth. And that's what it, what it always was like. You know what I'm saying? You need to be a contrary to the popular. Not, not, I'm not, not a contrarian. But now in these days, it's incumbent upon the artist to speak the truth, right? And I see this. I see a lot of bad stuff happening in comedy, too. I, I work a lot in, with like comedians. I, like I said, I work for Skankfest and stuff like that. And you can see that... <clears throat> Their, their, their comedic commentary isn't really geared towards those actually worthy of uh, critique. And then what you started to see happening, especially during the COVID days, was um, because the, 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 the topics of comedy that were deemed kosher were sort of like gay stuff. So you could see so guys like, uh, they were like, oh, they were sucking off a dildo. Like, sort of like the jackassy shit. And that's what a lot of this comedy is revolving into. They're not really, they're too scared to actually have commentary on real things. And then it devolves into like a gay, jovial, uh, jackassy. But at, at that point, like, if you're like, look how crazy we are, let me kiss my best friend in the mouth. And, but you might even not know what I'm talking about. But this is like, this was like a big moment in one of these podcast like oh look at this we're drunk i'm gonna kiss my best friend yeah like at this point you're not being transgressive because literally the mcdonald's billboards have two guys kissing like you're just doing yeah. you're performing a gay <laughs> act you're just being gay you know what i'm saying so yeah. i think like a lot of comedy has gotten gay a lot of art obviously has gotten gay everything's fucking gay well that's why i, I remember it how sucks. big comedy was like in the early 2000s like how how big comedy central was and how big like stand-up was and a lot of that was because they would take pot shots at like the bush government 
And mm -hmm. now, you, anything that is in power that would be humbled by humor and ridiculed is like an untouchable. You can't go on stage yeah. and re and if you try, it's like a huge deal. Like Dave Chappelle making a few yeah. remarks about trannies and then like apologizing mid set for it. Like, I, but no, really I love them. It's like, even yeah. that is like tr transgressive in it's, in it's way. Yeah. It's, it's like really that's a, great, that's a great point. That's a great point. Even like Shane Gillis, right? That he's being hailed as the new awesome, con you know him, Shane Gillis, that like the dude bro type of guy yeah. he's doing to the, they they pulled him out to to a course correct on the bud light uh, debacle when they used that uh, dylan mulvaney mm. tranny guy yeah and now they're pulling out shane gill as a new hot comedian and then his big netflix special uh he's being like promoted by joe rogan and stuff like he's like the big hottest commodity and they were and then all these dumb gen x like oh my god so based we're so back you know why because he said the word retarded <laughs> you know, I, I, but, but here's the thing just like what you just said he said the word retarded but then he had to come up with this whole disclaimer during his special going no but really i actually had a lot of down syndrome friends and they're really cool and they're actually really cool guys <laughs> and, uh, it's like what the fuck is this this is not based this I sucks can, I, I i can say retarded too i'm surrounded by retarded people <laughs> all fucking day yeah, i'm retarded <laughs> i can say i'm retarded i'm sort of retarded <laughs> there was also I, I remember in like the last couple of years i wanted to I, I have this like mental stain of watching lisa lampanelli as a kid do you know who that is who the fuck is that again is that a jew she, she's the jewish woman from la and her literally her entire stand-up routine was about how she oh, loved cr black men that was it. Yes, I know. And, yes, yeah, yeah. And I just remember the every single joke was just about how much he loves fucking black guys. And I watched this because I wanted to see That's how funny. if it was as bad as if I remember. And I was laughing a lot because she was like dropping the in bomb and shit on stage. And I'm like, even you could not get away with what the fuck Lisa Lampanelli is. Lisa Lampanelli would be <laughs> transgressive in today's day and age just because of like how. Uh, like how aggressive and ra openly racist she was just and then just saying like yeah but i like him <laughs> it's like okay yeah, you're nuts we really have drifted so far from anything that's good like it's just it's it's truly insane and i don't th see a way back like some people are saying like uh, cancel culture is on the way out i mean yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of theories about why that's happening like there's there's something like there's a theory of like the powers that be the shadow government the people pulling the strings they've sort of shifted more towards the right after a certain event let's say after the after the october 7th uh, attacks they sort of shifted further towards the right rather than the left and that has had a big ripple ripple effect in media and stuff like that which gives you the illusion that like there's more freedoms being granted to the to the to the plebs like us but if anything, it's going to be temporary, and it's not any of any great effect. Yeah, I the think. the main thing to look for is that when the big issue that has completely gutted any form of creativity or open expression or ac real true equity in terms of um, people in the United States and, and Europe is that you can't ex you can't buy or sell things, and if you can't yeah. buy or sell things on the internet, you don't have a place in today's economy. So until we can actually yeah. do that, everybody everybody can participate in the economy. There is no equity, and any equity that they say that they have yeah. created um, is an illusion. And any kind of culture shift, one way or the other, uh, you're allowed to make money as long as you're under the Daily Wire. That's an illusion. Sure. Until the average person can set up a fucking storefront and sell shit that they make, there is no equity. One hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, and until that time, well, listen, I do think, listen, I'm going to show my book real quick. I do think, guys, if you want to actually support true transgressive art and actual vision, please go to Butch Gilligan uh, Kickstarter page and back volume two. Let's show Ripperverse that we can surpass uh, their, <laughs> their slop. Why please. Ripper in particular? <laughs> I don't know. I just, like, isn't it like the top dog? Like, I mean, again, I really don't He's care. Made a lot I don't of want money. to see any of this. They made a lot of money, but it's just, it, it's baffling to me why, because it's not on merit, like, it's not merit-based, like, uh, here's the thing, I, you can, you're free to do, anybody's free to, to review my book on their streams and rip it apart, but just be honest, at what, what are you, what you think about it, you know what I'm saying, because I think it stands uh, the critical eye, the, the, you know, the test of the critical eye, 
Whereas I think if anybody looks at Ripperverse, it's just blatantly obvious that it's not, it's not, ba- the success is not based on merit. And I give you my theory as to why it became successful. And I just think, and again, it, to me, it's not conducive of like the indie scene or what that ought to be definitionally, because it opposes the big, the, the, the corporate media and all that. And then that's your answer? It's just some cookie cutter nothing? And then you look at the, at the Kickstarter page and it's all gay. I think we looked at one. I sent you a link about that one. Like uh, two gays in the field kissing or whatever the fuck the comic's called. Under the rip like, oh, That's No. No. Oh, okay. I was going to no, say that's a bit weird. It's, it's, <laughs> no, no. I wish. That would rule. No, no. There's, there's, it's a different uh, comic that was being... Uh, being oh, you're talking about it on right Kickstarter. Now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, uh, yeah. you know, it's all weird shit like that. It's either like queer lesbian romance or like just like um yeah. it looks like uh, there was some comic I saw that was being kickstarted and I swear to god it just looked like AI generated like um yeah. cheesecake <sighs> stuff where it's just like tits and ass. I'm just like what what am I supposed to be inspired by? I don't know. Um, okay, so che- cheesecake is like TNA, titty, yes, bait, yes. that type of shit. Yeah. That's a lot a lot most I would say most of comics being po- uh, uh, pushed right now on like these crowdfunding p- pages is that type of stuff. Yeah. So like, is that is that a healthy indie scene? I doubt it. I don't think so. Like, it's not really anything that's going to stand to test the time. It's just some fucking smut. And by the way, I, and by the way, on top of that, okay, uh, here's the whole theory. Can I get, take a piss real quick, and I'll give you my theory on uh, on uh, on the on the yeah. On the, I just want to say you should have yeah. been a voice actor because you have like a very distinct voice, and you put on like all these really? these different. You, Mr. Colin, you should have done voice acting. <laughs> you know, I'll do. I voice all my all my trailers too. Listen, if you need me for a voice, if you want me to do a promo, I'll do it. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna take a quick, fat, hot piss. Is that okay? I'll be back in like literally two it. minutes. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, chat. It's just us again. I, I have I haven't done a um an interview of anybody in like forever, and usually the people I interview, it's kind of like hostile. What was the last interview I did was Channing Crager? What a fucking what a fucking disaster <laughs> that was. <laughs> Who is this weirdo? It's Sven Stoffels. He's the guy that drew. In, in case you're late, he's the guy that drew the um the Hela Klein IDF uh, animation that I play all the time. And uh, he's the author behind Butch Killigan. That's like his uh, his current little pet project. And I read through the first one, and the um, he does really really crazy visuals. It's a very it's like a psychedelic kind of trip. So if you're interested in, in that kind of stuff, I, I would actually recommend it. And I I, I compared it. Um, his book is the one that I compared in the Gumroad video about um, Isom Two, just because Isom Two's like what they choose to present in like a visual medium really fall short and uh, and like his homages to, like actual like fine art and stuff in his comic book are really really cool did i talk to carolyn farrow after the channing crager interview i did talk to her oh that's right i did talk to her okay that, that's it true that's true that's an interview i did with somebody who um was just kind of like a chit chat about her arrest and stuff yes i'm gonna do uh there, not much has happened this week, so I, I kind of invited him because um, this week has been pretty short. So I was just like, you know, I'll do like an hour or so with with Sven talking about his comic book, and then I'll do my, right, I'm my back, usual. I'm back, I'm back. Welcome back. Um, What's up, dude? What's I was talking about <laughs> my my yeah. my usual lineup of interviews and how there are usually people that are like, as I mentioned before, um, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, you're gonna give me your hot take on. Well, maybe this is, maybe this is a good pilot, don't you think? Like, it's, I think I'm having fun. I love uh, talking to you. You're an intelligent guy. Thank you, thank you. you know um, no, you're you're yeah, very. We're, we're dangers of racism. Yeah, you're very passionate about art, which is uh, people like hearing people who are passionate about what they do. They don't want to hear somebody, you know, try to sell them something they don't they don't care about That's themselves. Not... You know. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sure what you're. I'm listen. Uh, you've probably talked to like a mega ret- retarded guys, right? On your stream. Yeah. Because I'm, re- I'm not really sure what you're referring to. People who aren't passionate about themselves. They're passionate about what they do. <laughs> There's tons of people that are like yeah. just kind of like in in the either and drifting along because it's like, it's what's uh, easiest for them at that point. It's it's, see, it's hard see, to yeah. it's hard to go out and to, and to try to start shit. You know what I mean? And try to like. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, and what I do definitely isn't easy. I'm fighting a massive uphill battle here. You know what I'm saying? I could, I could use uh, all you guys like a Goku spirit bomb. I need you guys 
to fucking give me your your energy. But okay, yeah, here's my here's my idea, uh, my thoughts on um, what was it called again? Cookie, cookie cake. I forgot uh, again. Icky cookie. Was it icing? <laughs> no, you, you had this term for like TNA tits and ass comic. Cheesecake. Okay, I need to remember this. Okay, sorry. Cheesecake. So as I was, maybe we should do this real quick. Can you go to like uh, Kickstarter and kind of scroll, like click on the comics tab and kind of scroll, and we can get. Oh, see you just want to see like other it. comic book Kickstarters? Yeah. No, yes. I, I, I did this. I did this exact same thing. It's like, look, the first one you got tits. Oh, you have orc tits too. The witches of odds and nippy number go. one XXX Attica connecting covers. And this is the first one. Go. This is fifteen hundred percent funded. It's yes. a cheeky comic. Um, Isn't that, that one looks that one looks normal? The now, now here's the sounds... thing. So here's the thing. So I here's here's a thought of mine that I had because I was following and one of my favorite animators, like a French animator. And I'm talking about this years ago. This is even before VTubers and all this type of shit popped off, okay? So mm -hmm. now obviously you've heard of artists. They do commission work, which is totally fine. You know what I'm saying? But when, when it starts to devolve into arts drawing porn, okay? Now this is a controversial take. I think that's a form of prostitution, really, okay? Because if you're a guy and you're asking another man to draw like some sex, like Pikachu sucking off another fucking thing... <laughs> You're gay. It's kind of gay, okay? So you're asking a guy to visualize some kind of a fantasy. Now, what I think is when you're, you're um, supporting this cheesecake stuff, it's actually a gay act because you are supporting another man's visualized sex fantasies. You know what I'm saying? Can you sort of follow my, my train of thought here? Yes, I've heard something similar where um, someone said that all porn is basically cuckoldry because you're jerking off to somebody else's sexual experience. I feel like, I feel yeah. like you're kind of on that vein. That's true. Yeah, you're sitting in the corner jerking off to another guy. Fucking, that's true. That is sort of like cuckoldry <laughs> from a distance. That is true. But I think this is specific. I think this is worse in a way, and people don't think of it this way, okay? So I want to give you this example that I had of this at French animator who sort of branched off, and he was one of the first that did this. He basically created a character it's called, like, Justine or something. Uh -huh. Fiction, it's like before VTubers, like a big-titted woman. But she also had, like... Was this in recent had, like, history sort of like or, a, like, like mid-90s? No, 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 this is, like, maybe five years ago or something like that. Mm, okay. So this guy... And by the way, this woman, if you look up this big Justine by Balak, is his name? Maybe I can, t maybe I can type it in our chat real quick. Fuck, what is it? Balak, that's the artist, Wait, real quick. You can pull up an example. Maybe, I don't know, just Maxine, 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 I think. Balak, yeah, this. Okay, look. Well, if you pull this up on, on Google Images or something, or it's on X Videos, which is blocked oh, here in Indonesia. I'm in Bali. Oh, I was going to ask, um, the, uh, I can't show this on screen because nipples show up. It's like a <laughs> redheaded... <laughs> character and it's, it's just like kill like kill is that just like fan art but it has like it has a specific now this is his original character she has a specific build she has giant triple g tits with huge areolas she has armpit hair and she has a huge bush and hair around her asshole now you guys can google this on your own time you can see this character i just did a pretty rudimentary job but this is a specific type now this is the artist's type he designed this character from his mind, okay? He mm -hmm. basically weird science his own little delicious fantasy woman. And what he did is he started a Patreon and he just he hired a voice actress to just do this character's voice. Okay, so you so have like this, puppeteer this concept that he has. He, yes. And he made like little ASMR videos and stuff like that. And that became such a huge success, okay? Like, that guy became a millionaire off of that, okay? So, like, wow. hundreds and hundreds of dudes subscribing to this shit to look at, like, an animated girl fingering herself or whatever the fuck she does. I don't know. But that is... But it's like one big I mutual think, masturbation session. It's, like everybody's yes, checking but each it's other also off in the groom. Gay. It's also <laughs> gay. Okay, okay, imagine this. Imagine this. It's the same as this. Imagine we only strip away the visual element, okay? Now, I've talked about this before, but... And imagine I call you and I just, and I ask you, hey man, and I'm jerking off and I ask you, just describe <laughs> your sex fantasies to me. And I'm jerking off you describing your sex fantasy to they me. They do that. That's what that is. They do that. They do these in That's Discord this things now. They, they jerk off and they talk no. about what porn, I'm telling you, they do it. It's a thing. It's called oh, gooning. God. <laughs> no, no, is that what gooning is? 
it gooning is like like edging for like hours at a time and just like watching porn constantly. But they get into Discord and they're all jerking off and they're all talking about like what porn they're watching together. It's it's no, dude, the no, people no, are no. fucking weird now. This is this is that people are weird now. No, that should be that shouldn't be allowed. Like honestly, so like, <laughs> I, I, I tell a story uh, on my stream. I told a story once when I was sixteen. I heard a rumor that like uh, the guys a grade under me that they were jerking off in the woods. And me and two other kids, like I was the bull, I was a bully. Okay, so me and two other guys, two of my friends, we cycled into the woods, and lo and behold, we found that they had dragged like a like a secondhand couch into the woods, and they were jerking off. Okay, mm -hmm. and I walked in there. I was like, "Okay, well, 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 what do we got here, guys? What are you doing?" And then, <laughs> as a punishment, uh, as a true bully, uh, I threw all their bicycles off a cliff. And I said, "Don't ever, don't let me ever catch you again." Now I you know you're full of shit. shit. What fucking cliff? You're in the Netherlands uh, as a kid, yeah, right? A cliff. What do you think? It, why would you say? I there's never no ever tell a lie. Why would you ever? Why would you ever doubt my words? <laughs> this is true. You could ask them. You can ask those guys. I, there's a cliff. Yes, there's plenty of cliffs. There's like uh, limestone mines and stuff in my area. I'm in the... Mm. Okay, I understand what you're saying. I'm in the south of the Netherlands, Limburg, which is like a hilly area. You oh, okay. You are in the only part of the like, Netherlands where that story can work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it's in the... Yes, because you're right. And by the way, yeah, that's in the north of the Netherlands. Everything is completely flat. But where I'm from in Limburg, it's literally, if you look at the map of the Netherlands, it looks like a tiny little droplet is dripping off into like Belgium and uh, Germany. That's where I'm yeah. from. And it's like, there's a lot of hills there. You can go yeah, hiking. Yeah, literally there, the only place in the Netherlands that has hills. That, that little something. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Lovely. But yeah, so, uh, and I think, yes, we should bring uh, bullying back for such occasions where... Uh, Bunch of zoomers are jacking well, off, sharing their. I actually know exactly what you're talking about because I've made this point before, and people got real mad at me because I I hate anime. I just have like this passionate fucking hatred of it, and I hate people that watch uh -huh. it. And one of the things that I get really like, we like can have a debate about this because I think you're wrong. I think you're wrong. But let, well, we give me a sec. What in particular? What I had an issue with was how people have these waifus. And I, I just said the exact same thing that you did, that you're you're basically fucking gay. If your, like, ideal woman is, like, this fictitious girl from anime, because she, number yeah. one, she doesn't fucking exist. But number two, she's, like, the ideal woman conjured up by, like, an autistic Japanese man. So you're, like, sharing in this mutual masturbation fantasy about fucking th that, that yeah. girl from... Um, Evangelion, the red-haired ones, like you know that that woman doesn't yes. exist. She never existed. She came from an autistic Japanese man's mind, and you're both horny about it. So that's kind of like a psycho psychological projection into homosexuality. It's it's like a gay egregore. Yeah, it's like a mutual. You're putting like this weird sexual fantasy in this uh, in this non-existent fictional character. Now I agree with you with that. Okay. But where I always, whenever guys go like anime is wrong or anime is degenerate and stuff like that, anime is a genre. It would be the same thing as saying movies are bad because there's such thing as snuff or whatever. That's sort of the way I come from it. But yes, you're absolutely right in, in that example that you give. But again, and, and what's I find your favorite anime? So, I, this is how you get, sell your book. What's your favorite Berserk. anime? Berserk. Berserk. Berserk fans out there, Butch Killigan is like basically Berserk, but in the West. Sort of, kind of. Now, Ber Butch Killigan is like a, if, if Paul Verhoeven made Berserk, sort of, maybe. Well, that's that's, of. A, that's I always a sales pitch, you, man. You, <laughs> but I hate, I hate the sales pitch where you go like, yeah, it's sort of like Demolition oh, Man you like meets. Okay. You know, but I guess maybe it illustrates the point. I can, re I can be respect Demolition that, and I wanted to do that. Demolition Man meets uh, Jacob's Ladder. No, that, no, that's a sales pitch. But yeah, as directed by Paul Verhoeven, that's what Butch Gilligan 2 is. Go back again. I need everybody to go back it and buy multiple copies. You can do an add-on. You get 20% off at checkout. Go, go do it. We need, this, we need this thing to fucking explode, guys. I need to become the next Ripiverse. You think? <laughs> that would be the universe correcting itself because I'm actually a guy that actually cares and is actually doing something, being unshackled. I'm actually showing you what a comic could be without the influence from the top by, you know, those types of guys. If, if with you the made hats. Ripa money, would you set up a studio in the U.S., in the Netherlands, or would you stay in Indonesia? 
Uh, I don't even know. But I'm not like the type of guy to fantasize. Like that's another thing really? we were goofing on. Like Ripper first, like yeah, and we're gonna have a cinematic universe. And yeah, it's going to have seven movies, and this is my casting list. It's like, come on, dude. Well, can we just get a grip real quick? <laughs> You're making a little stupid comic book. You know what I'm saying? But hey, listen, hey, respect where it's due. He's making it kind of work and stuff, I guess. He's got his thing. And again, you know what I'm saying? When I criticize something, I, I'm not trying to destroy it. I'm just giving you my honest view on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even if it gets me in trouble. Out of curiosity, I'm a like bit it. of a history nerd. Um, Indonesia was held by the, the Dutch as a colonial possession Ooh. at some point, right? Is there like yeah, remnants I mean, of Dutch culture there? Do you feel do you, do, do you feel not, that at all? There's a lot. Can I tell you, if you're a history buff, did you know, remember during the Hitler's Beer Hall Putsch? Yes. Uh, the, one, of the, one of the main guys that, that was there with him uh, when, the, when, when he got arrested and stuff. He also moved to Indonesia. He was here in one of the towns that I went to visit at one point. I forgot what his name is. Did you know that? No, I did not know that. One of his main fucking guys that was right there with him, one of the main three guys. I forget his fucking name. But anyways, yes, there's lots of uh, remnants of uh, Dutch culture here in their language, uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of Dutch words. In Jakarta, there is like a major uh, architectural influence in old. Uh, it, it's, it was called Bavaria, Bavaria. That was Basically, in uh, Jakarta before, or it was Bavaria or Batavia. Is that it? Batavia. Batavia. That right. Batavia. That's what it was. Batavia. I'm thinking of the beer. I'm thinking of Bavaria beer. <laughs> yeah, that's German. Uh, no, yes, uh, I got a little beer on the mind, figuratively and literally too. But um, yeah, Batavia. And um, so there's massive buildings there and stuff like that of the colonial past. Um, yeah. Um, That's cool. Major I know, like, influence still. In Vietnam, like they got their alphabet from the French. They have French uh, architecture. They have French coffee culture and stuff. So I was, I was cu mildly curious when you said that. I'm like, I wonder how Dutch it is there in, in Indonesia. It's pretty Dutch. It's, it's, I will say this. I was thinking about that kind of when I'm – okay, one of the things that I love about living here because I live in Bali, by the way, because – Indonesia is one of the biggest Muslim countries in the world, which um, it's kind of um, like, it's like coming from the Netherlands. There, and right? it, oh, yeah. And it's, it's many different islands and different cultures and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, coming from the Netherlands with all the problems that we have with, like, uh, Muslim immigrants there, I do come more and more to the conclusion that I think when we, when we have, like, Muslim, when we, in the Netherlands, when you have, like, the right-wing conservatards, Criticizing Islam, I think it's a psyop because what we should be criticizing is the actual people. We should be criticizing Arabs. That's the thing. Because the people really? here, these Asian, these Asian Muslims, they're not at all as fucking crazy as the people that we have to deal with on mass in our European towns. They would never rape anyone. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, maybe that's, that's, that's an interesting with perspective. I, I haven't. I have my personal issue with Islam is just that it's canonical that. Muhammad married a nine-year-old. He married a six-year-old yeah. and then consummated it at nine. I just can't get over that. Like, yeah, how can you call? Listen, I think it's complete prophet? fucking garbage. I think every, <laughs> honestly, personally, I think every Abrahamic religion. Who, who gives it? But I just think I think the more, more interesting point here would be that uh, I can see the difference between the different kinds of uh, quote-unquote Muslims. Basically, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I I, definitely, definitely, and I think, and I think the reason why. In our European countries, the, the, the institutional power and the political power at large wants to keep the discussion away from immigration, obviously, and make it about this specific religious sect, is because a certain other type of other would also be having the spotlight shown onto them. You know what I'm saying? I think that's kind of what we're dealing with. Yeah, I've heard that. I can kind of see that point. I just feel like yeah. criticizing Islam is like a form of soft racism. Because when you say you can criticize Islam, you're not talking about the guy in Ireland that has the big bushy ginger beard. You're talking about the fucking Arab. You're talking about like the, the yeah, Southeast yeah, Asians but that, but stuff. Again, Indonesia factually is the biggest goddamn Islamic country. You know what I'm saying? True. So you do kind of have to make that ex distinction. <laughs> and I think one, why, another thing, if we want to talk then about the, about the racial difference between, for instance, an Arab and like an Asia, Southeast Asian Muslim is Arabs because they don't practice. It's a different type of Islam. For instance, here, the ancestral, you got to uh, marry your first cousin or whatever the fuck. They don't do that here. That's outlawed. Okay. So it's like they pick and choose with their little laws. And I think the reason we're having so much trouble with uh, our particular Muslims in Europe is because 
they're of the incestual lineage. And what do you get when you have like four generations of like incest? You get like crazy testosterone bombed, low IQ mongoloids that like to stab and fuck. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so that I sounds about right. I'm sure that <laughs> Indonesians are, are, are chill compared sure, to Arabs. Not the, excuse me, sorry, I was talking over you. Sorry about that. No, saying? I just said I, I can believe that the the Indonesians are much more chill than like if you tried to live in fucking yeah. uh, Iran or something, you'd probably not have a good time. No, no, I don't think you would. Yeah, I would never live in Iran. <laughs> but yeah, I, the people here are super nice. But again, oh yeah, as I was saying, I live in Bali, Indonesia, which is more like Hindu. I don't even know what the fuck it is. It's like a lot of swastik guys everywhere, by the way, which is funny. Every little temple, every little corner has a little shrine. With a giant swastika on it, so it, it means it, peace. Like, is that like Hindu or Buddhist or whatever? Um, yes, the swastika is actually. I think it's. I know that it's Confucian as well. The swastika. Um, so it's just that it's like a Pan Asian symbol of peace. It's everywhere. It's all the way from mm. from Japan all the way to India. So it's like a Pan Asian thing, and it, it literally just means peace. But for some reason, uh, yeah. there's a weird story to it. Why Hitler thought that um, the swastika was a uh, was a um Aryan symbol because of the the Indians. So technically if you refer to the German swastika, you should call it the Hackenkreuz because that's how you distinguish the yeah. the Asian one. Hackenkreuz, the... which literally means the uh, the cross with hooks. The healed cross what is means. what it means in German. No, hack hack means hook. Listen, but in German it means healed. German. Really? Hackenkreuz is hooked cross. Okay, I'll take your word on that because you do. I, get, I didn't know you spoke German. I thought you just spoke Dutch. <laughs> well, my yeah, again, where I live in the southern part of the Netherlands, yeah, basically, is a, speak a Dutch dialect, which is indistinguishable from German, basically. Where, like, if I if I speak my dialect to a regular Dutch guy, they wouldn't have, they wouldn't know what the fuck I was talking about. They couldn't follow <laughs> a single word. And it's, it's basically like, because I'm, I live in the border region, it's like it has, a, it's like an amalgamation of like Dutch and German, basically. Oh, you're on like yeah, a really, see. that's a weird place. How did you settle on, on this island? Because it's like, it's an, if, when I picture Indonesia in my head, right, it's like this huge archipelago. I think I pronounced that right. Mm -hmm. And you just pick like one really small island. It looks like it's maybe the size of like Massachusetts or something in the dead center of it. Uh -huh. Well, yeah, it is very small. Now, I've traveled here a bunch to Bali specifically. And again, in the net, in the Dutch, like, uh, culture and lexicon indonesia is like a thing you know what i'm saying it's like in the discussion still because of our colonial past now i happen to my wife is from jakarta originally and then we decided i'm talking about you by the way with my wife oh, she's bringing me a pack of cigarettes thank you throw it for me oh, thank you so much so yes i'm a rice cooker as i was gonna ask is your wife indonesian <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah she is indonesian she's she's a 10 i should ch send you a picture of her as uh, a tradition yes, she's, the, a, she's the, a trad the wife, wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's not like some uh, so yeah we dated for a whole bunch and then we i went to uh, visit a bunch of times and we went to jakarta a bunch of times and then i was like i don't work from home i don't have to go to the office all day long so i was just like let's switch shit up i was at my old apartment in the netherlands for eight years eight to ten years i forget exactly how long i lived there and i was just like you know what fuck it i'll just i'll just come live there for a while and i'm planning to live here so we bought we got a little uh a two bedroom apartment now we're kind of looking to upgrade slowly just getting i'm getting my bearings <clears throat> but i made my whole new studio in here too and i really like it i'm, re I'm really loving the vibe I, I was gonna say what i love the most is the driving here because okay you know i'm, I'm gonna give you a, a chance to interject first because you probably want to say something uh, no I was just, uh, if i said anything i just say that i lived in the philippines for a while i'm uh, i'm sure that well, you is, is a, yeah i lived there for about seven months because i was working on h n oh. and they were headquartered in manila so I was there for about yeah. seven seven months, and then I I moved, um, mm. moved to Europe. So I've been I've been bouncing around in Europe for a while. Um, I see it. Have you been to the Netherlands? No. Um, no, I've wanted to go. The closest I've been to the Netherlands is Denmark. That's not that close. <laughs> no, okay, sure, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's pretty far, goddamn far, but. Listen, if you go to the Netherlands, please go to Maastricht. Fuck Amsterdam. Amsterdam is degenerate shit. It's all dildos and weed. Fuck that shit. Go to Maastricht. That's the greatest place. That's my city where I came from, Maastricht. That's where I used to live. It's where, uh, what is it, like a cool Maastricht fact? Yeah, you know, you know the uh, Three Musketeers? Yes. 
you know, you know, D'Artagnan, the leader of the Three Musketeers, he got fucking shot in the face there on the on our city wall. That's one cute little fact. Oh, dude, you're right. You're so, all the way down, like as far south as you can go in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little drop that's going to... And the funny thing is, now that I'm in uh, Bali, we're also on the most southern part of Bali. It's almost like the same thing. And it's all, also a lot of hills here where, where I'm at right now in Bali. Hmm. Cool. But uh, Philippines is is more like Portuguese and American influence, I believe, right? Um, the f- right. no right. Spain. Uh, it was it was first oh, a colonial possession of Spain. It was occupied by Japan for a brief time, and it was occupied by America in two different um, time periods. So oh, it's okay. actually yeah, yeah, super yeah. heavily Americanized. But the craziest thing about the Philippines is that when people talk in Tagalog, they sound like they're speaking Spanish, and you would never know the oh. difference unless you actually knew some Spanish to pick out that they're not actually speaking Spanish. It's like they've oh. super adopted and integrated like the way that Spanish people speak. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, and it and it's like Catholic, right? Catholic. It's, it's super. It's the most Catholic uh, place in the world, besides maybe the Vatican, and it's the only place besides the Vatican that divorce is still not legal. Um, if you want to, that's uh, odd. Yeah, if you want to get divorced in the Philippines, you have to get an an annulment, which is like a European history thing, is knowing about the corruption and getting the Pope mm. to certify an annulment. Um, and it's the same thing, same traditional Catholic. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, uh, corruption where you have to pay the government and, and say like no totally we never had sex ever we never consummated the marriage yeah, and then, yeah. and then if you pay there's enough there's similar things here there's similar things here though because it's also like you're not allowed yeah. to divorce under certain certain circumstances as well over here but I think it's like I think there's like certain I think it's like yeah if you like knock a girl up you cannot divorce uh, during the pregnancy but then after the pregnancy you can figure something out <laughs> stuff like that like weird really? shit like that too yeah, yeah, I think. Which is not, that's pretty based. You think it's pretty Yeah, cool? that's kind of smart because it's like, well, you guys, you're stuck together for nine months now, so you might as well. It yeah, gives you an opportunity you to make figure things it work. Out. Yeah. <laughs> you, got, you got nine months to figure something out. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think, I think, yeah, if you're an American, you'd probably be easily, more easily integrated in the Philippines. But I think as a Dutch guy, because I think it definitely helps with like the fact that I live here now. Like I don't know, like I'd have zero homesickness or anything, and I, I and and also in the back of my head, I know I will return at some point to the motherland. Obviously, I'm never going to stay here forever, but it makes it easier to just kind of see, like, hey, look, this is where my guys, my my niggas were here at some point. You know what I'm saying? We we established this place. We Does anyone speak some Dutch? Of the infrastructure. Or is it just English? Ah, uh, no, I I've never I haven't encountered anyone who speaks Dutch to be honest. But I haven't even tried to be honest. They all speak English. Yeah. They speak English pretty fairly. Yeah, well. the same in the Philippines. They all speak English. I know that there's some that speak German still in Namibia because there was like a small part of Africa that was a German colonial possession mm. for a brief time. So yeah, and of course, and of course, uh, South Africa is Dutch, right? The Boers, they're yes. all Dutch. Yes, there's a lot of Boers. Yeah, they they need to come back home. We need to we need to get instead yeah, of uh, mass. They're so Muslim they're so thick. Is that like a them. Dutch thing, like being thick headed and not wanting to get the fuck out of a country that's trying to kill you and your entire family? Probably, probably. <laughs> extremely. Pro- and I mean, they kind of have a point. You know what I'm saying? Like they it, cultivated. I that mean, they were yeah, they were there the before fuck. the Africans came because there's like that huge. I think it's the Gobi Desert, which is just north of South Africa, and it kept out I'm the Africans sure. from the uh, the Cape of of I think it's the Cape of Good Hope, which is where South Africa is. And they kept them out mm-hmm. until the, the white people colonized it. So they have a point in saying that they are the indigenous people of South Africa. But it's like, you kind of lost mm-hmm. that one. There's no hope for that shit. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think we should take all them. But I see somebody in the chat. He says, Sven, did your ancestors collaborate with the Nazis? Now, here's a funny story. So uh, the city <laughs> that I'm from is called Maastricht. My hometown is Valkenburg, which is like a, the Falcon's... Berg, I guess it's like it's like a, it's a little castle town. It's like a castle ruin on top of the hill. You know who's a von uh, Valkenburg? Uh Zoe Quinn from Gamergate. She's Chelsea von Valkenburg. Is she Jewish? No, it couldn't be. She's Dutch. Um, I'm not. She's von Valkenburg. Yeah, that's her real name, von Valkenburg. <laughs> She's a she's your royal. You say queen or princess <laughs> Zoe Quinn. <laughs> that's nuts. I should bow down. But yeah, I was I was going to say I was going to say this so that town had a huge um um Hitler Jugend school in it. You can google it. Valkenburg V A L K E N B U R G Valkenburg. 
It had a huge, it was like an old Jesuit a monastery at some point, and the Nazis came in, they kicked all the Jesuits out, and they made it into a big Hitler Jugend school, and uh, Himmler, Himmler visited my town, uh, my hometown, many, many times uh, in that era. Uh, and I think it was supposed to, because we're in such a border region between all the, uh, uh, between like Germany and Belgium and all that stuff, that was like a big hot spot of uh, for like the Hitler Yuga because they wanted to Germanify the the region. Yeah. I guess you know what I'm saying. I think Germany wanted uh, Luxembourg, uh, Alsace Lorraine, mm. uh, your area of the Netherlands, and then part of Belgium to be yeah. a part of Germany formal, and they wanted to make mm -hmm. a Reichskammerrat out of both Belgium and, and the Netherlands. They yeah. did with Denmark because Denmark surrendered in six hours, so they just like said, "Okay, you can <laughs> still be self-governed. I guess we're not going to fuck with you." And so Denmark was not fucked with for the entirety of World War Two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but yeah, you can you can Google pictures and you you can see Himmler uh, marching around in my little town there, which is kind of I I only found out about that like two years ago. I didn't know that, and I remember. Okay, the reason I found out about that was this because I remember I was part of my um, town's Facebook group, which is like handy whenever there's like a little problem. You can get like a warning or whatever to fuck on your Facebook group. It's all boomers, and I remember I saw like a request in my town's. Facebook group by like a Jewish documentary filmmaker who was making and was writing a book about Falkenberg and he was doing a re request to look into family into families the Dutch families that live in Valkenburg into their like um, family archives and pictures and stuff like that to to, uh, to uh, write about the Nazi uh, history of or to try to town. shame everybody that fucking lives there okay yeah, so here's a funny thing a couple of months later he he had a huge article in a, in our like a regional newspaper where he was like disappointed zero people uh, uh, <laughs> replied to my like nobody nobody worked with him so that kind of tells you, uh, you know, kind of like the vibe. Who the in that fuck town. wants to out their family? Because yeah. a lot of, you know, a lot of people didn't. They just worked with the government that was in charge at the time. They didn't give a fuck if it was the yeah, Americans exactly. or the British or the Germans or the Dutch. Like, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make glass bottles here. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you know? Yes, exactly. There was no national news. You barely had any idea what the fuck was going on. I remember the worst thing my grandpa had to say about the Nazis when they took over our town. Was he had a, he had this story of like he was a he was a kid he was like he he lived in a monastery and then at one point a Nazi officer commanded him to hand over his bicycle because there was some kind of emergency and then basically a, a Nazi stole his bicycle <laughs> it was his new, and he was like that was like the, the worst thing the only he, other he n word the other n words taking the bikes you gotta watch out for them <laughs> yes exactly yeah now there's a lot more uh, different types of n words uh, yeah. The cause of a lot of bike disappearances in my town. Okay, well, actually, there, my town is doing pretty okay. There's two things um, I want to ask you. I wanna, number one, I want to give like no. uh, ask you what your opinions are of certain people. Just really rapid fire. Like, what do you oy, think of this guy? Oy. Just oy, a couple oy. people, because I know that I know that you're doing the rounds. So I'm gonna I'm gonna create some friction. And um, the other okay, one. Is, okay, cool. Let's do it. I, I'm a big fan of silver coins, in particular old currency. So I have a request because mm -hmm. I know that the Dutch brought the gift of civilization and thereby the gift of silver coinage to the Indonesian people. Uh -huh. If you find uh -huh. any old silver coins, I would really, really like them. If you just happen to find one, like on a flea market. Um, really? Okay. You, you, if you can if, like, if you, because you can go online and buy them, but that's not fun. It's fun to go out to flea markets and hunt them down. So if you just happen to come across okay. them for whatever reason, I, I'm, I'm always open okay. to them. I, I was, I've actually been buying some gold and, oh yeah, I've been buying some gold and silver. I bought some gold and silver coins, but I have them in like a in like a vault in Zurich. But wait, what yeah. are you? You just said I want to get your opinion on some guys. I want to cause friction, and then you ask me to buy a silver coin. <laughs> it's how it works. About? Is this is this some kind of a reference to something? No, it's not. <laughs> I if just you like legitimately silver. want me to buy you a silver coin. I'll buy you a silver coin. Yeah, you know, if you, you happen it. across it, if by circumstance, this is, a, this is some kind of a deep cut, like uh, mad it's at not, the internet lore thing. I just like silver coins. <laughs> I, have, I have an entire box of Paul von Hindenburgs. Okay, <laughs> I like them. What the, what the fuck does that have to do with like shitting on other guys? It's just the last two things I was going to say. I saved them towards the end of the conversation. There's no, okay. there's, there's no Look, grand architecture conspiracy here. 
I'll get it. You're like on high hey, alert. Listen, you... <laughs> like I'm going after you. No, I'm not. Not like secular. Listen, we're going to cause some trouble here. Who do you hate? And then I get, okay, let's go. And I go, can you get me some coins of a female? <laughs> like, oh, yeah, sure, I'll get, I'll get you some. That's, <laughs> That's what you want. Okay. I would, um, by the way, I mean, if I, listen, I actually like the idea. I might go to a flea market and get some coins, and maybe I'll keep some, and I'll send you some. That sounds like a plan. I'd appreciate it. Yeah, cool. Okay, who do, who do I hate? Shoot. Okay. I don't give a fuck. What, what's, your, <laughs> what's your opinion on Ethan Van Syver? Ethan Van Syver? Yeah, Skyver, whatever. Pencil. Okay, so first of all, I need to tell you this, right? First, I am a ma- I'm an island. I rarely like network with any anybody or anything like that. I've I've learned my lesson that when I when I used to be with Red Bar. And by the way, I, I read some of the key. I joined Kiwi Farms. By the way, the Kiwi Farms forums. I joined them. Um, and yeah, I read through some of the threads about Red Bar Radio, uh, which was kind of funny. Um, I'm the hero in all, every story on Kiwi Farms, which was funny to read. You don't know about any of that history, do you? I'm vaguely aware of Red Bar because um, oh, yeah. there there were some clips that were sent to me, and he also I know he did that Ducktail song, which is also one of my favorite yeah. things of all time. Yeah, that's one of my my favorite things. I'm in the background giggling on that Ducktail. Is that you? Me. There's no way. Yes, that's me. Yeah, that's me. That's unreal. I, was, I did not know yeah, that. I was on that call. Yeah. Oh that's my me. god. On that call. It was just an on the fly thing that we did back then. That's that's fucking crazy. Yeah, that's me. But yeah, so that, so that thing, I I rarely like do like a full association thing or anything like that. Now Ethan Van Skyver, uh, what do I think of him? Like again, I honestly I know fairly little about uh, Comics Gate or anything like that. Honestly, when I was talking to Ethan Van Skyver, I had to ask a guy in my Discord, like, can you give me the quick rundown? Now I understand that's not uh, very exciting. Uh, so I don't know any of the deep lore. So I, no, you know, that's I, fine. I that's... You, I, and but I would say something. But I would say, yeah, he's a complete fucking faggot. But I just really don't know. I don't no, know that, that that's much. A, that is a perfectly acceptable answer. No, I'm not. I'm not disappointed at all. Um, do you? And by do you know... there might be a lot of answers, and not because I'm lying or afraid. I will fucking throw someone under the bus. I'll piss <laughs> shit at it, poo on their face. I mean, really, don't give a fuck. But I just don't know a lot of this stuff. I don't know a lot of the deep lore. Because I'm not really that much of a drama guy. I specifically, because here's the thing, people expect me, and this, by the way, this, this is kind of went by the wayside. There, there was a big leaked phone call between uh, after my falling out with Red Bar. It's a whole. You had story. a falling out. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But oh, then that's tragic. I, I was bringing up the J. I was JQing on the last time that I visited him. And we did a live show. I started a JQ, and he went to break, and he told me not to bring up to his tribesmen. <laughs> yeah, he's Jewish. You can tell by looking at him. <laughs> yeah, yeah he, I got it talking to several times. Now, then everything went black, and we had a big falling out, and it's a huge thing. But I wish him well. I wish him the best. I really don't give a fuck. So here's the thing. Usually what happens with something like that, when like a duo has a falling out, then one guy starts shitting on the other guy, and, that, and then they start to sort of grift on the drama. Now, I'm not interested in that. Like, I'm very much doing my own shit. I don't want to, it just feels like it's beneath me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like a drama farmer type of guy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's respectable. And, and, and that's the I, way to do it. Yeah, and I don't really pay much attention to that. So there's a lot of, th- like you, you're, I'm sure you know, about like uh, Kino Casino. That's what these guys do, right? Now, again, I don't have a problem with these guys. Uh, uh, good luck to them. But it's not my type of content. Now, I'll get in beef sometimes, but it's like organic. I'm not like, I'm not like seeking it out. I'm, that's not my... What's your, my um, your exposure like to, to Kino Casino and PPP? I'm kind of curious because you brought it up now. It, oh, well, here's how I know about that. Because one time... Fuck, what's his name again? Not the fat guy, but the other guy? Andy Worski. Another yeah, Worski. Worski. He one, time, I, he one time called into Red Bar Radio while I was still co-hosting. Mm. He was like, oh, my God. He was so excited because Red Bar Radio was his biggest uh, example, of influence, and stuff like that. And then we completely shat on him and embarrassed him and watched that <laughs> video of him going like, put the gun down. I'm going to shoot. <laughs> what was that again? That's uh, it. Like, that's stay, what's... stay back. Yeah. Stay the like fuck that. back. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. that whole thing and we completely embarrassed him and it went sort of viral i think uh that's what i know about that situation is he upset about that because he's it's like part of his, his lore now he's perfectly okay with that 
Sure, probably. Like, listen, and again, I'm not exaggerating when I say I literally know nothing. I know nothing. That's all I know. I don't watch stuff like that. Because I do think what, what they do is they do use, they use, uh, it's, okay, so I, this is what I'm starting to notice. Even with like a guy like Ethan Ralph, who I do like, now, you probably don't. Oh, uh, Ethan, Ethan, Ethan and I have a long history. I was going to ask you about him too. Mm. I do like Ethan Ralph. He's always been really good to me, nice to me. So I got, listen, I got to just pay my respect to the guy then. You know what I'm saying? If a guy's yeah. nice to me, I'm nice back. For sure. But you, you, most people probably, are. you have a big problem with him? What happened? Oh, God. Um, so a long oh, time God. ago, years oh, ago, shit. all I did, I, I said something like, I can't remember the context of it, but I said we, we have to sacrifice Ethan Ralph to the corn. And that became like a huge deal, and he has like hated uh -huh. me ever since. Um, and I, I, I've made him like a facet of my podcast because he—I don't know yeah. if you know like what he's been up to, but no. he impregnated like an eighteen-year-old, and then he got into a huge oh, beef with her baby daddy, and then he got, oh. then he knocked up somebody who was like a, a female to male transsexual, and then who became like a, a regular what? woman again. No, for real. Oh, God. <laughs> Say this stuff. Don't <laughs> if you don't want to, like you want to know. I, look, I won't go on. I don't <laughs> want to spoil this. this. <laughs> I'm going to be yeah. doing kills him too. I think since I'm making a round, I okay. have to bring this up. How about look? Okay, wait. Here's what I was thinking first. You don't real quick. have to. Or, or you do you want to continue? Purge, your, this, with purge your mind. Forget I said anything. <laughs> I'll forget about. I'll try to forget about that. But here's what I think though. When I look at like Kino Casino or like Killstream and stuff like that, I see guys. I see Americans because I'm looking at this from an outsider's perspective, and I see a lot of guys that are around my age, and they grew up with wrestling, right? Yes. And they're doing an online show. And they understand through osmosis, through absorbing that media, which, by the way, I've never seen a second. Okay, I've seen a second of wrestling. Never watched a full WWE match. It's fucking gay to a European. You understand? We're not going to get into it. I'm going to offend a lot of people probably in this chat. I understand it's like an American constitution. That's your guys' thing. It's fine, okay? But what I'm talking about is these shows, they try to incorporate these aspects. So I just think, like, at a certain point, in these guys' minds, it makes sense to just have the beef arc with a guy. You know what I'm saying? Now we're beefing. Yeah. So when you say, like, you mentioned something, we need to, he's like one of the children of the corn, and then he just takes it. Oh, yeah. Well, let me smash this guy down, mother brother. That's sort of <laughs> the way I see it. It's like content. It's not even Dude, real. You know what I'm saying? No, I don't get I it. Mean, he, it's real. It's just like, it, it's true. It, it's, it's more, it's less that they try to, they do try to drum some things up to make them a bigger deal than they are, but it is true that there's like a wrestling mindset which has permeated like internet yeah. drama culture, and yeah. it, it just influences how they make decisions. And it's it's a really weird thing, and I've noticed this and pointed it out too. So I'm I'm kind of amused that you've you've kind of fallen yeah. on that. Where it's like there's all these guys who are just like they want to be whoever the fuck that that big guy was that was the the host of the WWE. They want to like. Run there, Vince McMahon. Yeah, Vince McMahon. They want to be Vince McMahon. And it's just, it's, it's like a weird. Yeah. It's, it's, it's totally true. It's, it's spot on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So and this is reminding me of another thing. So, okay. So as a European, right? So you see, you you absorb internet content. So the so this type of stuff, I see. I just I just felt this 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 WWE drama farming type of entertainment thing coming through. And then on the other end, other end, and I'm sure you've covered these types of guys. I'm sure you know about like the whole nostalgia critic, that whole channel awesome cringe type of shit, early internet stuff, right? Yeah, for sure. Those types of guys, what I noticed there is every one of those guys, whereas like guys like Ethan Ralph have like the WWE permeating through them, they always have like mystery science theater. That's the thing, which is another thing I've never seen a single thing of. But I just threw osmosis, just threw, I don't know how you, how you catch up on this type of stuff as a European. You just see themes happening in this, in this internet cultural uh, uh, niche. And that's what I noticed with like a review, early like reviewers like Spoonie and uh, Angry Video Game Nerd and these type of guys. They love mystery science theater somehow. What do you think about that? Have you thought about that before?
Yeah, that's that's. I've never attributed it to Mystery Science Theater. It's uh, it's true. If you don't know, it's like this thing where it's just like they watched really bad movies, and they were they kind of had like these silhouettes of the characters making jokes throughout the movie, yeah. and that show got yeah. destroyed by the American copyright law system. But um, it, yeah, it definitely mm-hmm. had like a huge impact on on people and how they reviewed yeah. it. So so that's one of the examples. So so again, we got a lot of American media in Europe, but that's one of the examples that we didn't get, and then. Through the in, people that got influenced by that, I learned about their influence. Basically, even though it was like not, it was covertly. It's really, it's a really weird thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like it's like you've seen so much derivative shit of something that you've never watched the original yeah. of that you already know what the original is. It's kind of yes, like with um, exactly. Romeo and Juliet. You never have to read Romeo and Juliet because you've seen so many things mm-hmm. based off of that that you know exactly what the fuck yeah. happens to it. Yes, basically. By the way, I've never seen Star Wars, and I know that fucking Darth <laughs> Vader is the guy's dad. Really? You know? I, that's <laughs> yeah. whenever I hear someone hasn't watched Star Wars, that that kind of impresses me because it's such a, it's such like an international thing too, like the obsession with Star no, Wars. No, but here's the thing. Um, I remember when the re-releases came out in the '90s, the late '90s. We I had a birthday party. I, it was my birthday party, and my mom dropped us off in the. Uh, theater to watch the first Star Wars movie, I forget what it's called, Empire Strikes Back or whatever, I don't know, Jedi or something. Mm-hmm. And we were being so loud in the theater because it was just, it is it is kind of boring. Honestly, it is just kind of boring. That's the way I remember it at least. Probably, maybe I'd enjoy it more nowadays, but... So we got kicked out of the theater, out of the cinema, and we were just, <laughs> we were like, we were like, the Eleven? manager saved you from being like a Star Wars fanboy. <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing: so we were eating like hot dogs and food and stuff like that. And here's the thing: they kicked us out. And then I think I don't know if we discovered this, but one of my friends was like, "Hey, look! If you put your finger down your throat, you can vomit up your food." And we were all putting our fingers down our throat and vomiting. Okay, so now there's all these piles of vomit in front of the theater. <laughs> And then one of the theater clerks comes out. He's like, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out. <laughs> so we just kind of scattered into the city, right? Now, this is, this is a bunch of 10 years old. We're in the big city. Now, my mom, she dropped us off at the cinema for my birthday party. And she watched us go inside. And then she went shopping in, city, in the city. Yeah. <laughs> expecting when she came back after an hour and a half, after 90 minutes, to come pick, up, pick us up again. Now, when she arrived there... To her amazement, there was a person uh, cleaning up puke in the front of the ci- uh, cinema, <laughs> and the kids were gone. Now, she's responsible for, like, eight kids, uh, and we were gone. Now, this, and I, re- I don't remember the exact details, but I do remember this was, like, a huge disaster uh, back then. It got me a, bit, a good whooping uh, when I got home. You That's know? crazy. You <laughs> should she animate that story because <laughs> it's very visual. <laughs> That's such an insulting thing. Oh, you know what you should do? How about you animate that thing, okay, you fucking bitch? <laughs> hey, well, you know what you should do instead of telling that story? How about you animate it? I can't get back to that. I'm just saying it has a very <laughs> clear visual storytelling to it. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying to help you out here, and you're <laughs> taking offense to it. Yeah. Okay. That's that's just when I think of Star Wars. That's my Star Wars experience. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not, I haven't really ever watched it. No, I, I get okay. it. It, it. It's kind of it kind of makes sense why your stuff is so different from a lot of other people's work is just because you've s- managed to somehow just incidentally separate yourself from so many of the influences that normal people no. watch, and you're just like inundated <laughs> in like European culture and European stuff. And it, no, it's, you're wrong. No. You're wrong. I'm here's, wrong. Yeah, I'll okay. tell you this. I'll tell you this. I'll tell, no, you you're sort of right. But here's here's a funny anecdote about the European or specifically about the Netherlands. Okay. So I remember talking about this before, and Americans noted, like, holy shit, we, in the Netherlands, in the 90s, these were the, the sitcoms on my little Dutch boy television, in American language, because the, the, the Netherlands is the only uh, country in uh, Europe that does not dub over American shows. So that's why I speak English fairly well, is because just yeah. I grew up with, like, English Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but with subtitles. Whereas if you go to Germany, it's like, oh, it's with no subs. But um, I got this is this like the gamut of shows that were on my Dutch boy TV. Okay, Fresh Prince of Bel Air, uh-huh. The Cosby Show, The <laughs> Jamie King Show with uh, Jamie Foxx, The Wayans Brothers, um, Fuck Martin with Martin Lawrence. 
Um, we even had one, I forget what the fuck it's called. Uh, the guy, oh, 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 what's that black guy? And I brought another black. We had, it was like one black sitcom after the other. That's what I grew up with, blacks. I thought everybody in America was black. Was, was BET like a Dutch station or something? <laughs> Why is all this was regular, normal Dutch syndicated TV that just, uh, that, that, that just aired these shows? That's weird. That's super and then, weird. And then you, uh, yeah, isn't that fucking strange? Maybe so with, like if your theory was right, I would just American be making culture. black comedy right now. <laughs> No, maybe the the issue was is that um, what you were exposed to just repulsed you to American culture, and so you actively sought to avoid it whenever possible, and that's how you ended up to where you were. I will say this: I, when I watched all these black shows, it was literally one black sitcom after the other, interjected with like The Nanny, maybe, and Al Bundy, just complete '90s misery and degeneracy. Basically, I wouldn't know. If, I don't know if you would call it degeneracy, but it wasn't really like elevating the human spirit. Something like Al Bundy, it's just miserable. So you would see Al Bundy being miserable, interjected with like blacks having a lot of good times. And uh, I don't think I was like uh, rejecting it, but it was, it was really kind of obvious to me that there were sort of, even in my young, stupid kid brain, I was like, this is a little much. I remember thinking that, like, what the fuck is all these, everything's black. I remember thinking that because it was really overtly so. And I remember talking to Americans about this, about our television schedule. And they were like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah, here, the Tracy Morgan show we had, the Tracy Morgan show. You know that black guy? Yeah, it's it's kind of a known thing in the U.S. that like in the '90s and 2000s, because what had happened is that the the saccharine like wholesome sitcom was like a '80s thing, and then in the '90s mm. they kind of turned that on its head, starting with The Simpsons, where you had dysfunctional yeah. families, stupid fathers, absentee fathers, strong mm. controlling uh, mothers, and the the kids were usually like problemed and they had issues, but then at the same time on black television they were kind of just copying the 80s thing but for black families to try and give them mm -hmm. what they they had saw for for white television so that's why you see that is because they were deliberately trying to like satirize wholesome television at the same time that black people were just trying to emulate it yeah they they were they were like raising the morale on black people because they felt that was needed in that community whereas they were satirizing and subverting like the happy Go lucky, uh, uh, like uh, uh, nuclear family style shows from like the even like the like the sixties, seventies, and eighties. But then again, another aspect of that, next to like the cliche tropes of that, because and by the way, here's the thing: those tropes have never succeeded. They're still around. Okay, so the dumb white guy and like the divorcee and the, and the degenerate kids, those sitcom tropes are still around. You know what I'm saying? So they've never like course corrected that or anything like that, you know what I'm saying? But another yeah. thing that happened in the 90s is too, you start to slowly see like gay couples and uh, more divorce and lesbianism and all that type of stuff, They're normalizing homosexuality and shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know they did that. In, well, okay, you know, in the, in the Martin show, he was cross-dressing as every single character, but sort of like Eddie Murphy would be doing in his movies. Okay. I got... Um... Two more people I want a, a fast opinion on, okay. and then I think okay, that, okay. that that's the, the point to wrap it up. Uh, right, Dick Masterson. Go. What a fucking faggot. No, no, no. I, I, like, I'm going to be <laughs> appearing on Dick Masterson on Sunday, by the way. Yeah. I'm having that's... an appearance on Dick Masterson on Sunday. Uh -huh. and you what you about have a problem v with him? <laughs> I have a problem with everybody. Rather, everybody has a problem <laughs> with me, too. Um, <laughs> okay. What like about Vito, about his, his, his co-host? Okay, so uh, again, here's I'll tell you here's the truth. Right, I always speak the truth. I asked because I, I appeared on Dick Masterson without Vito last year during my comic book launch. Uh huh. Now, what I've seen about Dick Masterson is that he uh, he he was also shitting on Ripperverse and stuff like that, which I kind of thought was kind of cool. Um, you know, I, I, and uh, but I again, I'm not a guy that tunes into the podcast really at all. You know what I'm saying? So I just know through osmosis, I know things. Um, what? I, but you're about to tell me that Dick Mastin has like 15 illegitimate black children and you fucking <laughs> strangled the I'm, baby in a bathtub. I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> I think it's best. But, I think it, you, you got you to gotta live okay. innocent. 
<laughs> what, now, what I heard about Vito is he's like a pedophile type of guy or something like that. I don't know. He's a pedophile. And what I know about Vito, too, is like he created a comic. Okay, wait. I gave Vito some tips and DMs a little bit when he started his comic book. Uh, I was like, listen, because he, oh, he asked a question on, okay, let me remember this correctly. He asked a question on Twitter. He was like, he, he put like some kind of a retro filter on his book and he was like, uh, what do you guys prefer with or without retro filter? And I was, all my alarm bells went off. I'm like, dude. So I had to DM him because of my uh, professional concern. I was like, listen, don't put a retro filter on your fucking comic book. I'm like, how, how are you going to print it? If you're going to print your uh, comic on this and this type of paper, you're already going to have that sort of retro look that you want organically. So if you add a retro filter, that's going to fuck up. So I just felt the need to just kind of help him. And uh, what I remember from that conversation was that he says, oh, who's doing your lettering? And I said, uh, me. He's like, and who does your inks? I'm like, me. And I remember him saying, oh, wow, that's a lot of hats. That's what I remember from Vito. And then I know he's a, pedo a raging pedophile. <laughs> I don't know if he is. I'm, his, to be I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, not that. I'm not trying to get you in trouble, like I that. promise. The, I never um, say something like that. His, he can get me in trouble. I can give a fuck, dude. His, um, his issue is that if you were to be as generous as humanly possible to Vito, what he did mm -hmm. is that he wanted to get attention. So when the that movie Cuties came out, he and Dick made mm -hmm. like a bunch of jokes about how it's like the best movie ever. And he went on and on yeah. about defending the the life the right to life of pedophiles. He did like the, all this shit to get like attention in, in the most generous interpretation mm. possible, and that okay. kind of miasma of being the cuties guy and being the pedophile okay. and the guy associated with Max Carson who also did a thing about cuties. It's like that's that's their issue. It's like if you were to try and advocate for them, is that they they uh -huh. stuck their their they stuck their whole face up to their fucking neck in shit. And now they smell uh -huh. like shit, and it's it's difficult for them to to kind of gotcha. recover from that. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Now again, I literally am not familiar with the guy at all. I just told you exactly what I know about this guy. Uh, now, uh, if he defended, if he's is he's like literally because I've heard some guys look something like cuties comes along, and again, listen, this is such a. I'm such a uh, bad person to talk about this type of stuff because I have never watched Cuties. I stick it, whenever stuff like that happens, I see to. it for what it is. It's sort of like this, this, this again. It's like this drama farming type of thing. To me, when Cuties came out, I was just okay. It was the the thing of the week. You know what I'm saying? Now, what I remember of Cuties, what was Cuties again? It was like a couple. They had like sexualization of little. It kids was like it was called. Mm -hmm. It was released in French. It was called Les Mignons or whatever. It just means like the the littles. I want to say. Or like okay. I don't know what, what the fuck it was, but it was like a, it supposed to be about bad. like French African kids coming of age. But it was mostly the thing that people commented about oh, was yeah, that yeah, it, yeah. there was a lot of crotch shots of like little girls in leotards dancing, and it was very weird and, yeah, and obviously yeah, yeah. sexualized. Okay. Well, that's obviously bad. Oh yeah, wasn't it like I think Sneeko, wasn't he also a guy that defended that movie because wasn't it like the narrative in the movie was like. I mean, I could be wrong, right? Just tell me if I'm wrong. Wasn't it like uh, the movie sort of like depicted degeneracy of like the West and then like the African kids showed like the Western girls how not to twerk and be Muslim or something? Was that what it was? Or no, I might be completely there, off. No, he, I don't. Sneeko was like huh? a Muslim, so he was like defending. I, I think yeah. he, I don't remember Sneeko's drama, I'm not familiar with him. But there was supposed to be like a culture clash thing where it's like American dancing is clashing with East African Muslim. Yeah traditions and that was Look, that was so, like the, the, so what, the point what, on paper what i hear you know what would be what bother me about this if i would have to look into the situation i i already know what would bother me about this is that this is some kind of a lesbian feminist that got funded by the french government and another person with a really good idea proper movie idea got snubbed out because he didn't check all the diversity boxes and then this was to to whoever has like the big uh government taxpayer art fund in Paris, uh, they uh, decided to go with one of their communist, nepotistic fucking friends, and they gave some fucking lesbian a, a bunch of money to make like a, a movie about immigration, a reconciliation. That's what that sounds like to me. I might be completely off. And then to me, what I hear when people start fucking having internet debates about that, you're actually, uh, uh, you're part of the problem because you're proving 
to these commies that the, 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 that have subverted the entire art scene who are wasting taxpayer monies and subsidies, that this, oh, you see, it's, it's causing a debate, uh, you know? Now, if they're actually showing, like, child porn and that, obviously they should all be fucking put on their knees and have, like, a little, you know, a little, I don't, I'm not going to fat post right now. <laughs> that would be my opinion. No, you know I, I'm saying? I, I wasn't trying to, like, drag you to the muck of, of debating cuties because, like, I don't know, it's, it's, like, four years fucking old. <laughs> it's like a, I'm it's just a letting, three-year-old movie. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, uh, I, I kind of wanted to... to I don't know. Maybe it was a cause a lot of trouble I, with me when I have to appear yeah. on that show and I go, "Hey, uh, Josh, yeah, yeah. you told Josh <laughs> that he was a pedophile." Listen again, <laughs> I can deal with that shit. I really don't care. You can set, you can go ahead. Really, I can take it. We'll do it. If they if they if they cancel my appearance, they're gonna be uh, sorry for that. And I don't think oh, they, they, won't. they wouldn't do that. They want you. You're you're like um. Listen, <laughs> you're um, you're Boone. You're Boone to the show. Uh, <laughs> I'm boon? You're a boon to their show, like a good thing. Mm, like mm, a... Mm, mm, mm. Right, listen, uh, yeah, if he's a pedophile, uh, I'll, you know what? I'll ask him about it. I'm like, listen, I've been hearing you're a pedophile. What is that about? I mean, if you do, that'll be, I'll, I'll play the clip. <laughs> I'll take sure, the response. I'll, I'll play dude, it. Li- listen, dude, I'm genuine. If this, Now that I've heard that he's a pedophile, I'll go, listen, yeah, dude, by the way, Vito, I've been hearing you're a pedophile. What is that about? I will ask him that. Um, you know, yeah, but, okay. But it has I to mean, be genuine. I can't, I'm not going to like, if everybody starts, oh, here's, here's the rundown on Vito. This is what he did. I kind of don't want to know. You know what I'm saying? I, I'll ask him about it. Sure. Yeah. Like, okay. I, I mean, I'd be really, opinion. I'd be curious to see what he says. Um, as far as Maybe Ralph, there, Ralph, I don't know. Ralph is just Ralph. You know, he's, he's not, he's not really changed all that much. Like some weird shits happened with him, but people will give him shit for it. But he's, he's basically still Ralph. Ralph is Ralph. You know what? I think you and Ralph, you guys can become friends again and we can mend the sector. And then <laughs> then the, the race Avengers have one extra member and we can actually start, uh, you know, defending the realm, the sector. It's, um, no, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, it, it would be a bad thing just because oh, he, he says such awful shit about me that, like, at this point, trying to what be nice, trying to be nice to him, it would just be, like, not, it would be like, um... Turning. I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I understand yeah. what you're saying. You'd be, you'd feel like you'd be, cu- you'd be, you'd be forgiving too much. But here's the thing: the way to counter that is you have to recontextualize uh, whatever bad things he said about you as, yeah, he's just doing his uh, Vince McMahon bit, basically. Nah, he he said, he's said some really. Listen, nasty I, don't shit. I don't want to mend any friendships. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just we'll saying. See. I just say, I, I, yeah, listen, uh, but yeah, there was another one, another guy that you want me to, want me to shit on, which one is it? And chances oh. are, I've never, I don't know about this guy either. Uh, Nick Ricada? You want to shit on him real quick? Oh, is that the Jewish lawyer type of guy? Yeah, he fucking, so I don't know. I know. He, he's Again, he's Polish, I, uh, not Jewish, I think. I don't know. It's mm. it's hotly debated among well, the internet we all, we all know where a lot of the Eastern Europeans immigrated from uh, on the turn of the century. They all came from that area, but. Uh, maybe he's you, not. He sort of looks like it. Physiognomy. Physiognomy. Do you co-sign giving coke to nine-year-olds? <laughs> this is an easy um, one. <laughs> contrary to popular belief, no, I do not. Uh, I think that's really bad. You know, here's a funny thing. So when I, we, we mentioned earlier, I had the big falling out with Mike David. Uh-huh. Then this phone call, the secret phone call recording dropped of me spilling all the shitting on Mike completely. Uh, by the way, I stand by everything I said. And then uh, this podcast with Paul, what is that guy's called? Paul M. Hulte, like Steel Toe Morning Show? No, you you definitely know that some stuff. You, you know too much. Leaked tape. He did like three hours on my leaked Red Bar tape. Oh, really? That guy. Yes. Okay. And it leaked was actually Red... pretty good coverage. <laughs> what was the leaked Red Bar tape? No, I don't. God. Let's not get it all. Yeah, it's like I, look. It was a whole thing, you know. Like I said, I was JQing. I got. Uh, he, uh, I got. A, had. A, I was really angry about that. I went back to my hotel room. I got pissed. All of a sudden, my hotel room phone rings. I'm drunk, and I got. By the way, I I, I got shunned by. I can't we shouldn't even get it. I really don't want to get into it. It's not because I just. Uh, you could find all of this. I just don't want to rehash it. I didn't give a fuck. It's. I really don't give a shit. 
<laughs> okay. Or do you really want to know? Do you really want to know? Can you like sum it up in just one sentence? Fucking shit. Okay, so I do Red Bar Radio. I get, I fly out there. I'm in the studio. We have a big show. We're drinking. We're going nuts. I start JQing. He goes on pause. He tells me, don't talk about my people. I uh-huh. start talking about his people again. He goes on pause again. Please don't <laughs> talk about my people. I do it again because I'm drunk. Then the show is over. We have a big yelling match. I tell him he's a fucking faggot. Then I go to my hotel room. Now, we had a huge, big plan to do multiple shows. Uh, we were going to hang out. We we're going to shoot guns, blah, blah, blah. Now, and next day, I wake up. I try to call him. No answer. So he's basically fucking ditching me. I flew out there for him with his, and his fucking show. I'm in Tucson in some fucking shithole, okay? And I'm like, hey, you know what? He might be a little pissy. Uh, I'm going to just hang out by the pool, do my thing. We'll try again tomorrow. Call him again. Nothing, okay? So I'm being shunned. I call his wife. Hey, what's happening? Nothing. So this is three days of me just sitting in a fucking hotel room by myself, uh, getting more and more pissed, trying to make the best of it. All of a sudden, my hotel room phone rings, okay? Literally creepily, okay? My, the, room on my, the phone on my goddamn nightstand rings. I okay. pick up the phone. There's a guy there. Red Bar News. Here to get the scoop. Like a creepy voice. I'm like, uh-huh. what the fuck is this, right? And then this guy tricks me. He's like, listen, Mike is talking massive shit about you right now. He's in the Discord. He names a bunch of realistic names. He basically ropes me in. It all sounds super legit. I'm like, okay, well, this guy's a fucking faggot. Blah, blah. So I just go off. I go off for like, a, for like 60 minutes. So it was, like a, uncle, it was like a yeah. fake guy that was calling you on behalf of pretending to be mike and then you, you dumped on mike he's, and he... pretending, he's, pre- he's pretending to be one of the mike's inner circle guys that's in one of mike's group chat m- naming a lot of names that would be in that group chat go like yeah mike is fucking shitting you completely blah 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 and i'm like i had no reason not to believe that i'm drunk and by the way at this point because mike had basically ditched me in that fucking hotel room for like four or five days I've flown out there. I'm like, you know what? And I was already, I was done with him. I had told some of my other friends, like, listen, I'm fucking done with this shit. I'm never doing this again. Fuck this guy. So I just went off. You know, I just fucked this. This is another thing. You can listen to the whole call if you want at some point. And then it gets leaked and it gets circulated by like Aaron and Paul. After, that, after that's done, I realize it's too complicated, but I just realized, oh, fuck, this was not the guy who he said he was. <laughs> so I realized uh, this was probably going to get leaked. And what did I do? Even though I fucking couldn't stand Mike at this point, I was done with him. I call, I sent Mike a message. Listen, dude, I just had a fucking phone call. This might be recorded. It's going to go. So I even giving a heads up. And here's the funny thing. I was been getting ignored by him for like four days. And when I sent him that, he's like, what the fuck? What happened? What happened? Then he did respond all of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, he yeah. was interested in responding. Uh, and then, yeah, that, that leaked phone call came out. A bunch of people did a bunch of podcasts about it. But, yeah, I was just uh, – I was done with the Red Bar uh, the moment he basically ditched me. That, f- that phone call was a little cherry on top. And, yeah, you can hear the details if you listen to the whole phone call. That's basically the rundown of it. No big deal. I'm done. And then, again, and then the aftermath of that is, like, people going, like, oh, yeah, well, talk shit about him. Is he really sick? What's his disease? Here's the thing. Again – I know all the ins and outs, but you're never going to hear it because I'm not like that. I'm not going to be drama farming. This is this guy's life. I wish him the best of luck. Uh, I have no ill will. Uh, to, to, I don't want to destroy him or stuff like that. That's literally not in my character. Like, let the guy do what he wants to do. I'm not one of his Because his thing, what people are used to, whenever Mike is a falling out with somebody, it becomes a huge deal. They yeah. start uh, shitting on each other, big blah, blah. I don't have that in me. I don't want to do it. I don't want my life to become that type of shit. It's just uh, not in my uh, character. And I understand it would be entertaining for a lot of people. And I could destroy him. and destroy, <laughs> But I don't want to destroy him because we used to be good friends. And I'm proud of him and I'm proud of what he did. And I like Jules, his wife. And I just... Uh, but sometimes, sometimes when you think you're friends with somebody and then they show you a certain level of disrespect, then it becomes time to just go, you know what, this is as much as I will take. And then uh, we just, you just separate amicably, you know? So uh, he will no longer have the privilege of having me in his life. That's the way I look at it. You know what I'm saying? If people disrespect you one too many times, 
that's about it. You can't uh, keep forgiving somebody. You know what I'm saying? You can't keep, you know what? He's just doing it. No, it's just, okay. That's fine. That's it. But it doesn't mean I want to kill him or destroy him or anything like that. So that's not, you're never going to get any of that from me. Now, unless he starts, if he pulls the first punch, <laughs> there's going to be some atomic bombs, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that'll ever happen. Uh, it's probably a good idea then, because it, it, it like distracts you from what you're trying to do, right? Yeah, I'm not. That's not what my shit is. Listen, that's, that's not. That, that that's not. I explained that before. You know what I'm saying? I just uh, that's not my uh, my vibes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, you should probably listen to that phone call. Uh, you'll get a lot of extra context to this. But my, hey, my... Butch Killigan number two, go check it out right now. The best indie comic ever. If you actually want to get a comic that is contrary to the top-down corporate Jewish control media, <laughs> you should get this one. Great. Okay. I'm a subscriber. <laughs> you should be too, if it sounds interesting to you. Um... Sven Stoffel's uh, very small world. Crazy to hear that you, that you know that your how deep your roots are in in the in the, the in sphere the that we're in. Yeah, the sector. One some might say the, the sector. That's right. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, it was really great talking to you. We should do it again sometime. Maybe this was a good pilot for you. If uh, if ever there would be another interesting person for you to talk to, that's not like a complete mongoloid at uh, down syndrome yeah, yeah it, it is it's nice to have a, a chat with somebody that's not like a, a insane person isn't it you were sort of hesitant you're like you know what i never do this but i think it went pretty well what do you think recap I, quick recap yeah i think so we, i think we covered everything we covered uh dutch history yeah. indonesian history <laughs> the the history of uh, west european arts and the influences in the comic industry <laughs> i think i think we well, covered all our bases Jesus Christ, yeah, did we ever. Can we scroll one more time to my uh, Kickstarter page? Because people really need to go and support this uh, Kickstarter. Can it's uh, the time? Indiegogo has been on the screen, but also this is the... I know, but Indiegogo is kind of like, that's the variant cover. That's not, we need really need oh, that's the variant. Kickstarter. Okay. That's it. We okay. need to get both. You need to get both. They're very collectible, uh, both the covers. And they're in limited print, too. And of course, if you missed out on the first campaign, you can still get Butch Gilligan Volume 1. When you go to pick your reward tier, then go to checkout, and you can pick an add-on. You can e There's even signed copies. I went to Texas, by the way, a couple of months ago. I went to Texas Comic Con, my first Comic Con. I was there selling books, and I signed a bunch of books. I should have probably sold, uh, signed more, but I signed some books. You can add those on uh, uh, to your pledge. But yeah, come on, guys. You need to get this freaking campaign and running we need to become the next ripperverse you know what i'm saying co-signed by josh right here he loves it right josh <laughs> i did enjoy the first one <laughs> out, of, out of all the comic Is books it? i've read all three of them it was definitely the best <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, listen, and it is the best on Kickstarter right now. we got to make it happen. You guys got to support me, help me out here. Uh, so you can get started on uh, book three. You're going to get your copy. This is not you funding my dream, my idea. And then once it's funded, I'm going to start. No, the book's done, okay? You're going to get your book 100,000%. It's awesome. It rules. Go check it out. Please support it. And I guess that's it. I love being here, dude. It was awesome. It was, yeah, by the way, for me, it's like it's 2 a.m. Do you know that's 2 a.m. for me? Oh, well, I'm I'm very sorry for keeping you up. I know it's fine, dude. Yeah, we got to do it again sometime, dude. You're an awesome dude, real intelligent yeah. guy. I love talking to you. Yep. Talk to you right, later. Guy. You're you're gonna am I gonna go now? Um, yeah, because okay. I want to. I, I, I have my notes oh. for the the stream, so I think I oh, just have to hang okay. up at this point. Oh, so, oh wait, so wait, it, oh so. Right now, or yeah, oh. bye bye. Okay, what? <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.